Coming to you from Final Third Cigar and Whiskey Lounge in Ingalls, Indiana. Indiana's exclusive Aladino Cigar Lounge. It's the Final Third Podcast. Welcome back to the Final Third Podcast. I'm Rob. I'm Scott. And I'm Mike. And today we're going to be talking about PCA. We're going to be drinking beer because National Beer Day is what day? It is April 7th. So April by the 7th. time this comes out, Sunday? it's going to be next is that right? Sunday. Yeah. Sunday? Yeah. So Sunday, I, April 7th. Like I need an excuse to drink beer on a Sunday? Yeah. yeah. It's not even the NFL or anything? Exactly. It's um, a sad day because there's like no games that day. So, Well, we're also going to or I'm, I'm like going to try it on games. the show, which actually you guys have already tried it. We NCAA. can all try it. On that Sunday? Yeah. Whatever. None of them matter because sure. all of our teams lost. So, <laughs> fuck them. No, all your teams lost. That's true. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> We're also going to sip on the uh, Double Oak uh, from Moondrops. Yeah. And then I am going to try what you guys have already tried on the last podcast, the uh, the rye barrel from Moondrops that um, is two years A old. Two-year, yep. So it's not obviously not ready yet, but it's going to be a good thing to try. So Their own distillate on that one. Yeah. But we're yeah. also going to be smoking the McAuliffe Blue. I brought these fresh back from the show. They're going to be on their way here very soon. I think I saw an invoice come into my inbox today. So uh, hopefully we'll get these in the ne- within the next week, and we're going to smoke these on the show. Very yeah, I love it. This so you had one already, right, Rob? You had one in, in I, Vegas? I might have had three or four. Three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they yes. sent you some samples here too, didn't they? Uh, no, I didn't. Sam- oh, okay. That was, I was the first I ones I smoked. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. So surprised at first and expected um, it to be what it was? like It was. Yeah, I, what I expected. Yeah. It was very good. Okay. So can't wait to see what you guys think. Yeah, so said it was a medium-bodied cigar, right? Yeah. So this one's a little bit medium. Is it, uh, blend of San Andreas Sumatra. Thank you. And Ecuadorian Habano. Uh, fillers from Nicaragua and Dominican. Cool. They have two, uh, the Robusto and the Toro. Yes. And the uh, the retail on these are, I mean, it's just like the black and the other ones is, you know. Yeah, same price. 10. Yep. Yeah, so, you're gonna be around that eight to nine dollar range on them, and um, can't beat them. I mean, it's it's a great great deal for uh, a new brand, a new, another new line from them. They're gonna try to keep all of the colored series in that same price point. Um, the cool thing is they um, I can't I can't even use my words today. They <laughs> they have the red well, and the talking. white coming. I know my voice is almost <laughs> gone, but the red and the white are gonna be coming. I think later this year or the first of following. So, yeah. So, the cold draw is perfect. Like, it's easy and it's got some some interesting kind of high fruit notes to it that I really like. Yeah. It's, it kind of does that same thing as the the blue sapphire from Rojas. Right. Yep. I'd Did agree. that kind of a, you know, isn't that hilarious? They named this blue, the blue, that was the blue bonnets, and they both have that dry blueberry thing going. Yeah. I don't know if that's intentional or if I was that's subliminal say, do you think or that's, what. Yeah, I was, was going to say that that might be a subliminal it thing. It could be. It's going to be an industry thing. Yeah. That's a your taste buds are wrong thing. It's almost like um, like a, oh, um, what's that cereal? The cereal that has the. Um, blueberry. No, not that's blueberry. What I was thinking. <laughs> Similar to blue, blueberry, but more like the the Lucky Charms. The oh. the aroma coming off of it, the, but it's not the lucky. It's it's the Rank one with it, all man. the little fruit, the fruit loop, fruit loops. Fruit. <laughs> God damn, can't think of that word. Wow, fruit loops. Wow. Just throwing out some wild shit. He's like, man, there, yeah. there is no right. freaking words was, in my brain right now. <laughs> Rob uh, is fried. You know, here's the problem. Rob uh, is is we stayed up way too late watching hockey. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have had that last. You know, 147 proof that uh, brandy mule. Probably apple, didn't apple help me either. Mule. Yeah. But then I, I got up this morning, and I had a haircut, and I got a straight razor shave. Nice. Yeah. So yeah. everything's back to normal Oh, I feel you. fantastic. I'm like, I am just as good as you could possibly be right you now. You look good. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate that. I brush my beard. Can, can I ask you a little closer? <laughs> you want to? You Touching wanna, legs? You want to touch? <laughs> <laughs> you want to rub my face, Rob? <laughs> All right. No, Spark I don't, but thanks up. for asking. Yeah, of course. Definitely, definitely <laughs> what are friends little... for? Exactly. Are you going to use that when you're going to go soft flame? What are you doing? I'm going to go ahead and use it. So how was your um, cut? How did You did the straight cut with that. Did it, it work? It peeled the cap off. Actually... This got such a great draw, it doesn't matter. Huh? Well, um, but it still didn't leave a lot. It left a lot there. Okay. So this is the this is a new one that Vissel's making, apparently. 
Um, they sent me a sample here, big table lighter. If you can see it on the on the YouTube channel at least. Um, this thing is a freaking four jet, yeah, massive it's thing. Um, it's got a rest on top. It's got a punch on the bottom, and it's got a straight cut on the back. And I used a straight cut, and it you know it worked fine. Um, but we'll see how it does. You know, going forward with it it's a little bit. It's got every type of cut that you need, except for V. Except for well, except for V. Throw it away. Yeah, it's like <laughs> trash. Yeah, trash it. But it's heavy. I mean, it feels like a really nice lighter. It looks like it has a really large tank on it too. So we'll find out. I'm using the soft but flame lighter. I've become I love just that a lighter. huge fan of this soft flame. I'm just happy if any of my lighters actually light. So well, that's always the we'll yeah, see what happens. Thing. Yep. One for one. Look at that. Hey, nice. where'd it go? Well, there's something with my jets. Like I even cleaned it the other day, and it will not light unless it is turned all the way up. Uh, could be your jets are back. going out. Uh, yeah, I think I just need to swap it out again. Dude, so one way that I like to clean the jets, I don't know if you do this or not. Don't know if anyone can actually recommend you doing this, but I do it. Blast is it. I usually use the um, the butane and I blast it, jet it, yep. back, blast in there, yep. let it cool down, and then light it, and it just the hardest part out. with this one is the touch. So like as soon as you flip, the gas is on. Gotcha. So like I have to I have to make sure it's a hundred percent empty, oh, or I'm that's true. Explode a can of butane, which I've almost done before. That seems like a little little scary. Yeah. So like I mean like the gas is flowing now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's it's scary. We've talked about yeah. how scary my lighter is, but the thing I like about this cigar is so so when we smoke the black, that first initial retro hell just blasts you with that nice strong pepper. This one, you're blasted with a lot of spices, but not pepper. It's more of the the um, strong baking spices. Um, maybe a little bit of pepper on the on the top of the senses, but it's really the all the other baking spices that are coming through the nose. Oh yeah. It's very really soft. nice, really nice. Yeah. Well, I love when you first light a cigar and it it has such an easy going draw. Yes. Sometimes it can be a little airy. This is not. It is a nice. I wouldn't call it a heavy smoke, but a nice kind of uh, medium bodied mm -hmm. smoke, right? Um, but lots of flavor in there, lots of baking spice for sure. A little bit of that. I'd say probably more white pepper than black pepper. On That's it. probably what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> yep. the, um, on the not palate, sharp enough, so right. And yeah. on the palate, I mean, I'm still getting a little bit of that sweet fruit note underneath the smoke. I don't know if you're getting that or not. Absolutely, um, I almost get a little bit of like dry cinnamon. Okay, not, not in the like, nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 On I can the see retro, that. Yeah. like the dry, like a shaved cinnamon stick. Yep. Yeah, yep. That's kind of so. Well. Why don't we get going? Yeah. Um, start, you guys you can start pick, with your... I'm going to start with this if you want to pop one of the bottles uh, to get started with. Do you want to try a pour of the seven-year again? Because last week we didn't get to smoke with our moon drops. Oh. So then, yeah, that is totally up to you because today is beer day. It is beer well, day. So do we want to do bourbon first and then get into beer? Or do we want to do beer first and... These are all stouts, so I think it's going to wreck our palates. I would tend so, to agree with you. So I let's say do a little do a, bit. Yeah, let's little do pour an ounce of, the of that because... We've had many pours out of it, but we have not paired it with a cigar quite yet. And Rob's over there trying his uh, two-year yeah. moon drops distillate. Well, Mike, you're right. The um, it still is holding out that white dog kind of nose. Yeah. It's very but just a little. I mean, you still you can still smell the oak, but it definitely has the sweetness of the yeah. of the white dog. Which you guys both tried the white dog. I, mean, I know we did. Yes, you tried it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I got yeah. some. They were running yeah. that day. So you while you were cleaning dog? up, and I, I got to go through yeah. and do the the tour, which was after they the show. were. It was so after the show. Yep. It? Oh, it was incredible. It was absolutely fantastic, and they were right in the middle of the hearts. So I mean, <laughs> it's a little lighter. You're than, like you're getting the best part of it. That yeah. mine was not light because I was right in the. Oh really? I think the not, one that we yeah. pulled off was like one twenty seven or something. Okay. So it was a lower. But, I mean, that was a different run. Yeah, I don't know what the proof was. They said it was somewhere around there. Hmm. But I would say if you're talking about, like, flavor and just overall complexity, like, I was – it was absolutely wonderful. And it was cool to see them mashing and um, distilling. I mean, they're running through the whole process, right? Um, so we and, talked about, um, like, how they're, they're pretty much a supervised automation process. With, with like their equipment. What do you think of that? Because like me and Rob toured it 
last um, or two weeks ago, and then you got to see it, and I was surprised at how advanced some of the equipment was for how small of a operation yeah, they were. I, yes, I I wonder, you know, how many problems, and it, it sounded like they've had issues just with equipment breakdown. Yeah, you know, when you do a full work cell versus the independent machines, then tend to see a bit better process overall so uh, i'm sure that they're getting you know their money's worth got to dial in the but it's it's just like yeah man you could have a lot that could go wrong at any one time and sure. and it and it creates some challenges and yeah for sure. it, it was it was funny talking to to mark and, and hearing him he was kind of bitching and moaning about it. he's like yeah this this shit took us so long to get it up and running and something's breaking all the time and but yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it was there was nothing. The only manual thing was moving from one station to the next station. The rest was completely yeah, automated. Transferring everything. It's yeah, crazy. It's, it makes for you know nice labels. It makes for perfect fills every time and good packaging. And it's just having to do all those processes, and then you do one, and then you carry the bottles to the next thing, and then you carry into the next thing. Yeah, yeah, kind of a pain. But so I see Rob over here adding a drop to his two year. What yeah, you, what you thinking? Um. I can I can see where it's heading. I think I really like the there's there's some fruit kind of in there. You obviously you get that kind of the, that rye note, mm -hmm. um, a little a little oak tannic, not in a bad way. It's like it's young oak. It's start young oak. Thank young you. Oak. It's pulling the oak, but it's not quite old enough to be the good flavor of sure. the oak yet. Yeah, it's getting there. Right, but there's still a little bit of that almost butterscotchy thing going. Okay, which is nice. Yeah. The sweetness there. Yeah. But I added a little drop of water because I'm sure this was probably right out of the barrel. And I think that yes. they said they were going to try to release that first batch at 100 at proof. 100, yeah, he was going to So go I was going to try to bring down and see where they're down. heading to. So Yeah, he wasn't sure what this one pulled off at, but it was it was definitely more than 100. Ooh. That, that actually does something bit. nice. Nice. Um, it definitely brings a, a, a brighter um, cinnamon kind of note to it. Ah, see, I told you. He you killed his, and i that's what I said. I was like, as yeah. mine sat on the counter and, and aired it out a little a more, little it opened bit. up a little more to, yeah. to some of those cinnamon notes. I don't know why I've been kicking on cinnamon lately. But it's actually not like the cinnamon it's spice. Cinnamon. It's, no, it, it's leaning more towards a candied cinnamon for me. Oh, really? See, mine yeah. was I think that's what I said. I think I said cinnamon discs. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. Oh. See, I was thinking like the dry, dry cinnamon. Okay. Maybe you're just thinking of your cigar. Maybe I am now. Who knows? <laughs> Dr. Well, Scott says all, I'm often wrong. So. We all suck anyway, right? Yeah, we all suck. Yeah, we all yeah. wrong. We all yes. learned that. Fuck Thank the you, pins. Jackie. Fuck the pins for sure. Fuck yeah, the fuck the pins. <laughs> um, but no, I, I really like it. I think it's headed in a great direction. Um, I'm I would love. I would love to go back and talk to them in a year. Yeah. When it gets to three, sure. Taste it again, and then when it gets to four, taste it again, because they they said they're gonna they're not gonna release it until it's ready. Right. And that's the way they should do it. Now he also made the comment that. You know, you still got to pay the bills. Yeah, bank man's coming. And if we get if we get to four years and it's really good, but we want to wait till yeah. five, but we have to pay a bill, they it's may release it to four. four. Well, and that's totally fine. Keep up with this uh, MGP that you got there. Well, as much well, as he's making, I mean, he's going to have that Rick house full. Well, I think I did not hear him say that he had, he's timed it out where it'd be about six months. Once he gets the the last release of the MGP out, he has about six month lag between that and his yeah. own stuff. Yeah. yeah. If it's ready at the right time, so and he said I'm sure that's that nerve wracking. Go find more MGP if he had to, and that's true. You can always yeah. find age MGP. Yeah, sure. So, which is awesome. Yeah, I mean, what are you thinking, Scott? What so since oh. this is our this is our first chance of trying this with a cigar, and I think this is a great cigar to put it with. I actually think it it is a perfect cigar. I think it's a great pairing. With. Yeah, I mean, this had some very nice fruit notes to it. That we talked about. Yeah, and adding the cigar to it, it just it absolutely. I was getting like red together. red fruit out of out of the seven year uh, MGP. Uh, so so this moon drops. I know we talked about it last week because this is what we were drinking. Uh, Sixty corn, thirty six rye uh, for malted barley. Uh, seven year source MGP double oak to moon drops. Um, and no bashfulness it says right on yeah, the back. Sourced says it right from on the MGP. back. This isn't a secret. Um, yeah, we're not trying to pretend yeah. or hide anything. We're not telling you. And by the way, Mike, thanks for you. thanks for getting the bottle yeah, and bringing it in. Yeah. Appreciate that. I got a bottle of the moonshine. Which one? The apple pie. Apple pie. Yes. What'd you end up with? The lemon shake up? Uh yeah, the lemon. Yeah. Yep. 
And I think my favorite was the Orange Crush. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of I'm taking cool. it to the wedding this weekend. So. Oh, good for you guys. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We need to yeah. talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Totally. Well, not. actually. Well, congratulations, Eric and Carson. Yes, Yay! congratulations. Unless Cheers. Unless something happens Cheers. and then we'll cut this part out. Cheers. Cheers, yeah. <laughs> if Carson happens. runs. <laughs> <laughs> no running. <laughs> or wait, if Eric runs. So but, the, by the no, time he's... this releases, the wedding will have happened two days ago. Mm-hmm. I don't think anybody's running at that one. No. Yeah, nobody cares. Maybe They're perfect each for each other. Arms. Yeah, they are yeah, perfect no. for each other. Nobody's running. No, but yeah, so uh, me and Scott are going to end up down there. That brings out the high uh-huh. fruit notes. I got also a little bit of, of cinnamon roll. To your point of talking about some yep. of the dried cinnamon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I just, it kind of just popped, like, like just as it <coughs> kind of finished. The, and you said you were going to get a couple bottles of these for here, right? Yeah, I've got them I on got order them for some it. reason. The rep. Or the distributor didn't deliver them. Who do they distribute with? SG? I think it was Southern Glacier. Okay. I have to go back and look. I'm pretty I, sure that that's what it was. Correct. Um, I feel like we talked to him about that, too. Well, and I texted uh, texted um, Josh and told him that they didn't get it to me. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Could be could be distributors playing games again. I don't know for sure. Yes. We'll, we'll find out. Scotty D's got a new fan. Uh-oh. He yeah, does. He so. does. Josh yeah. liked you. Thanks, yes, Josh. I appreciate yeah. the, the nice comment. Yeah. Really appreciate that. So you brought him life. That's fantastic. I don't know. He didn't I, say that. I, I don't know. <laughs> you, <laughs> what the hell does that even well, mean? You bring <laughs> me life. So. What I heard was you complete him. Yes, oh, you complete oh, him. That's what oh, I heard. It's, it's like my, a circle. It's, it's my circle. clean like close circle. shave. It, exactly. Well, even before pretty, that. Yeah. Well, maybe it wasn't the clean shave. Um, you weren't clean shaved. I was not clean shaved at all yeah. last week. You're pretty yes. fly for a semi white guy, right? <laughs> semi white guy. That's perfect. Uh, shades of Scotty D. The sun has not been out for a few days, so I know. Yeah, eh, no, no new back. shades right now. We need to start every episode with a, a color swatch. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> just, we'll just do Can a you time lapse. Get of... like a, a fifteen different browns and bring yeah. it in. We'll oh. just put my yeah back of my hand up against. I don't know if you remember oh. last year when he got back from Mexico. He looked like he belonged in Mexico. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's a native I do belong in dark. Mexico. Well, you do, Man. but yeah. yeah, love me some Mexico, Guanajuato, baby. So yeah. let's while get some we're beer going. while we're sipping on this one, before we get into the beer, okay. What's new on the table, Rob? Oh, yeah, hey. there is something new here. What is, what so, is this? I can talk about it now, or I can bring it up as we get through the show. What do you want to do? I think you got to just come on. Rip, right, it, right. rip it. So you guys all saw we were, vote, or we were asking for your votes. Um, we were nominated for the best cigar bar of the Midwest. Um, we were one of 11 in the entire country that were nominated, or that actually made it through the nomination through the PCA, and then it went out from the PCA to um, the public for brands, for um, you know distributors, brands, and also for customers of the lounges. And we pulled out the trophy. We won. Heck so, yeah. So we actually got the 2024 Best Cigar Bar of the Year. They call it the Best of Leaf um, Cigar Bar of the Year in Midwest. So Heck we're yeah. very huge, excited. Huge, yeah. huge congratulations. Huge Thank cheers you. to you yeah, and cheers Lisa. To you guys. And cheers all to all of the employees, us. Yeah. Everybody that's worked hard yeah. to to make this dream come true. Yeah. Well, and and yeah. this this honestly is not us. This is all of us. Everybody that comes in here, this is actually an award that we all won together because the culture that has been created here, honestly, I feel like that is what Got us to win. It wasn't the beautiful building because I will tell you the the pictures and the videos of the other places, they were gorgeous. They spent a lot more money oh, yeah. and made them look beautiful. It had nothing to do with that. I think it had all to do with the culture that's been created yeah. here, the customers, our employees, everything. I feel like it's just, it's just a good. It's Midwest hospitality, right? Yep. But even like and all the ones that won, I I watched the video of all the winners and all of the all of the places that won were locally owned they like, are they, and that's what that was the goal of this this yeah. was not for any no chains no it wasn't no, for no so so burn, burn yeah. blend um monte cristos not, all not those part of this one they're not allowed to i mean that obviously those are yeah. beautiful places uh but um but no this was all for um stores yeah or shops Great. or yeah. lounges or whatever yeah mom, mom and pop brick and mortar exactly a, that is yeah. a huge win that's awesome. I mean, we were we were stunned. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. For those that are not familiar, PCA, the Premium Cigar Association. Yes. Right. Yep. And they are basically the organization for the entire United States and and beyond too. In the world. Yep. Yeah. The world. Yep. Um. So that's. Uh, I mean, you don't get any better than that. Mm-mm. No, we were super excited. I, 
Yeah, we we were stunned. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now you can come into the award winning final third. That's cigar right. In whiskey lounge. Yes, that's right. There will be billboards. Yes. <laughs> yes. There might. There could be. We'll see. <laughs> see. Maybe we need a. Maybe we need to update the the recording for the indie fuel tonight. Ooh. Right. Gosh, yeah, yeah the, be too late. There's no way. Yeah, I know. They I barely know. get it on the thing when I need it on there. <laughs> Gemini, I'll go. I'll go with you tonight. We'll take right. a projector in there and we'll yes. just hold up Sweet. the picture of that on the. I'll just yell it board. real loud. You know, that's right? actually a good idea. I, I can need get to it probably, on the ice. I'll, I'll probably call Halston and see if they can do that next game or two. Yeah, that'd, that'd be, be great. great. Yeah. yeah, heck yeah, award winning. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, while Scott's still enjoying his seven year MGP, we're gonna dig into some of this beer. So as you see here, I brought some of the. Uh, Goose Island, BCBS. Um, nice. I think all three of them are 2019. Yep. There That's is. Like uh, it. That's awesome. The the CBS I brought was 2019 as well. Was it good? Yep. Yep. Um, I've got the Weller 12. The Weller, um, it's uh, aged in Weller 12-year barrels. Uh, I've got the original stout, and then I have the Moncherie stout. So does it taste just like Weller? It is. <laughs> it gives me such a um, Weller but um, bump. smell. Wait, which well? <laughs> oh, full if you say, all of them. Okay, all of them. If you say special reserve, then I'm, I'm out. I'm out. But if it's William Larue, mm. I can't. I in. can't drink that Green Label bottom of the shelf shit that everybody thinks awesome. Well, it's nothing cool personal to all you that bad. love it, but it is yeah. just not my cup of tea at all. Just, it's I'm just. Not a fan. I, yeah. I don't get it. People go nuts over it. I got a line. If you love it, yeah. awesome. But it's, it's like the Cuban cigar. Dude, 10 you years ago. You can't find it. It's the best thing yeah, ever. 10 years yeah. ago, it sat on the bottom shelf mm-hmm. of every liquor store in half gallon size, and nobody even looked at it. So you don't you want me just, to bring my half gallon of Weller to the no, 500? To, to anything. To ever? <laughs> to anything. To anything ever. ever. I mean, you can bring it if you want, but I'm not going to drink it. But, <laughs> you know, and that's one of the things that we talk about. That it's pretty brilliant marketing on their part, even though it's a pain in the ass to get anything from them. Do they even do anything? Or do they just not stop the, the uh, whole, hey, it's it's Pappy? No, it's I think pappy. I think they, they held it back to make sure to make it scarce so people would want it. And Ooh, then when I people started hunting it, they now they have a brand. I think it was Minnesota. I don't know why I'm getting targeted ads from Minnesota all of a sudden. <laughs> Uh, as a <laughs> Don't face- you know? <laughs> Facebook ad uh, said, our job is the best whiskey lounge around uh, is to make sure that you know the truth. And it was uh, they did a side-by-side comparison with uh, Benchmark Full Proof and Taylor Barrel Proof. Okay. And they were like, it's the same fucking thing. They, they said that they they're they were I mean tasty I will tell you I it's love the them same both mash bill, right? I love them both they are both great I mean they're yeah. benchmark chicken. foolproof is delicious for 16 18 bucks compared to what 400 for the fucking <laughs> the foolproof you know what we, you we need to get it. we need to or find one because I've got benchmark foolproof at home I could we'll do that we I don't do remember it. the name of so this all place. we got to find is an EH Taylor foolproof you know what I can go to you know what I'll get one at home no it's fine I'll donate the bottle of benchmark foolproof you can donate the bottle. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Damn. So, seems like a deal Damn. to me. That's, that's, uh, I'll just I'll, I'll provide my palate. Yeah, yeah that, that's, 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 that's all good. we need. Good. Yeah. yeah, all right. This that's is a, this is a good trade. I feel good about this. <laughs> you feel good about this? I feel good about this. <laughs> He's gonna bring it. It's gonna have like that much yeah. in the bottom right, of the bottle. Right. Like, sure. It's gonna be like your two year <laughs> over there. Exactly. This, this is what you get. Yes. Make it last. Sorry, you get to taste my. That tongue. could be a fun comparison though. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to bring yours. We can find one for the. Well, no, it would be impossible to find one, but well, I think there, if we were going to do it, though, we'd have to do it blind. Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah, I would have to. yeah. yeah. I, I'm in. I Let's might have it. trouble with that though, because that was the first, like, very first bourbon that I ever tried. So you don't want to ruin the dream, or you think that you know it so well that I think I would. I think I would know it. That'd be even better. Or that than, is yeah. better. That that does make it. Better. I, I think I would that makes know it even cause... better because if you think you know it and you go into it and you screw it up, I'll never. It might it be the same thing. Yeah. See, I don't drink much Knob Creek, but it wins every single time I'm having it in a blind. Really? I, every time. I'm well, like, why don't I drink this more? I often? did that well, blind down there in Southern Indiana and had no clue that one of them was Jeff the Creed. It was fine. Right, that's it right. was you fine. Said it was good, and it was fine. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. It was, it was yep. weird. Well, some because I keep hearing, you know, Will said it too. Like some of their new stuff that's coming out. What six year? I guess is what it was. Yeah, I think uh, so. I haven't seen any of it, so I keep looking for it every time I go back to Kentucky. I might just have to go to the distillery and get a bottle from them because yeah, I don't be see it at the liquor stores. But. I mean, we all hope that their stuff gets yeah. better because obviously the stuff 
I've talked before shit about them. Terrible. We ought to try it at this yeah. point. Like, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Hey, well, we, we, we always talk we, shit. We always open up. We always try bottles. Yeah, no yeah we're, we we always talk shit, but it, I mean, honestly, the only reason we're talking shit is because Same we want, to do, want you to do better. I yeah. mean, that's why. Yeah. Do better. If you do people. better, we'll tell you you're doing better. So, All right, which one do you want to start with? Montreal? You pick. Weller? Let's get that one out of the way. The Weller? Yeah, Special Reserve. All right, this one's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this one's crazy. Is the box green? The box <laughs> it is, is not a, green. It looks like a gray green. It has me. been aged two years. Nice. Really shiny writing. Aged two years in 12-year Weller barrels. Okay, 12-year. Those Weller 12? Yeah. All right. Okay. All, right. All right. So this one, um, what is this one, 15.2% or something crazy? Okay. I think they're all above 14. I'm not trying to like save this box, but... Forgot my left hand isn't the one that works. Oh, look, I had an easy tear. You yeah. just weren't idiot. Using. Tried to see what the ABV is on this one. I always like the packaging because, like, I, I always like the the etch glass and like the raised glass. And so this is the lowest. This is eleven point three. That one is. Yeah, and okay. I think uh, the Moncherie is fourteen point two. Uh, let's see here. Fourteen point one, and then the uh, original is fourteen point two. <clears throat> All right, let's pop this one. See if I can't make a mess. Yeah, I'd I'd brought in um so another shout out um Gary that comes in here on Wednesdays, sometimes Thursdays. Um he's a CBS fan and he had brought in the 22 or 23, whatever that one was, and we did them side by side and I thought we I thought we drank the last the last one I had and I found one in the back of my fridge. So I'm like, "Oh, Good, we can try that one today, too. Perfect. And it was a 2019. Yeah. Now, I'll say, I've got, <clears throat> in my in my closet at home, I have... There's more if you guys want to take more. 2012 BCBS, all the way up through 2022 or 2023. I think to just 2022. And 12 and 13 were not good. Really? Yeah, that was I when they Jen had them in the four that. packs before they went to the bomber bottles. Okay. They just had them in, in 12 ounce four packs and not great. Mm. I mean, it's not like they were bad, but certainly not the price that they've typically had. So, so I'm, I'm sure we all know by this point, like Jen turned me on to a lot of this stuff, including these beers. Uh, and it was Black Friday, like eight years ago or something. The first time I ever heard of the BCBS stuff. Yeah. Um, she was like, go to Liquor Barn and whatever they let you buy, just buy it. I was like, okay. She went over to Coles or something. It was, I don't know what she was getting. Um, but I ended up getting through, and they had every single offering from whatever year that was, 2015, I think, maybe 16. That would have been like the first year they did the, yeah, the special releases. Yeah, so yeah. like she already knew what it was. I had never heard of it before. I didn't even realize it was beer. She just had BCBS, so I was just assuming it was some bourbon because mm-hmm. um, I was still getting into it at that time. Um, they had every single one of them. It was like nine at the time. Like the original one was not, I think, eight or nine. Uh, and I bought all of them. Yeah. And I, I guess Jen ex- only expected there to be like two or three left by the time I made it. <laughs> that was a dollar. But- <laughs> oh, yeah. I spent like $400 yeah. On, yeah. on those. And I was like, well, I, she got back to the car and she was like, how many did you get? I was like, I got everything. You said buy whatever they would sell. I bought all of them. She was like, "How much did you fucking spend?" It's like, like four twenty five or something. I don't know. It's like I got nine beers. Like, what the you, fuck did I? Just you gotta, buy? you gotta really be detailed, right? Yeah. In your request. Come on, Jen. Use Come your on, words. Right. I found the soap at the store, by the way. <laughs> you found what? I found the soap. Oh, did you? Nice. I walked right. You now know it. where soap is. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Welcome to adulthood, of, officially. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants that. Yeah, nobody wants that. So this one already smells quite like Weller. Reminds me a lot of uh, barley wine. Oh, I was going to say, I yeah, have like a nutty barley wine mm-hmm. on the nose on this one. Super thick. Yeah, actually, it's not as thick as I was expecting on the palate, though. It's thick, but it's not, oh, it's wow, not no, like it's CBS not. Yeah. Thick, thick. Yeah. Interesting. The bourbon is definitely oh, coming through there. present. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think I'll have to wait till sip two to really. Say anything because I feel like well, I'm and also a it's a still a little drink. cool. It needs to probably be a little warmer. Yeah, an extra five degrees wouldn't hurt. No, not at all. So I brought these snifters in. So Rob and uh, Scott have the uh, bourbon Kentucky barrel, bourbon barrel ale snifters. I've got these exact ones, and I've oh. got uh, against the grain 
from Louisville. Nice. Very nice. All locally stolen from nice. somewhere in Louisville. Oh, nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I think we bought this one. I don't know. Stole those. Yeah. Bought that one. Stole those. Got gotcha. you. Because I have like every single rendition of the Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Ale sniffers. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I got the B with the brown ale and all the other ones are, they have a lot. I'm And this cigar, so yeah. good. It goes great with this too. Yeah, it does. Final Third Cigar is Indiana's exclusive Aladino Cigar Lounge. Come to Final Third for a selection of over 20 different Aladino cigars, including the Cameroon, a wonderful cigar with nice light flavors. Make sure and visit Final Third, the Aladino exclusive cigar lounge for Indiana. It's hard to kill one of these. Like, This is one that you have to share. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I never drink one of these bottles by myself. No, me and Jen always so split. monstrous. Super rich. Like yeah, yeah. All, yeah, all of them are super rich. It's not milkshake thick, but damn. Like, yeah. coat your whole mouth. Yep. I mean, just like they should, right? Well, and some of the bourbon counties do get very thick. This one this one definitely is not as thick um, to me. One of the coffee ones. This one gets thick, thick, I think. The, the CBS. CBS yeah, is usually a, pretty thick. It's, it's pretty fruity. Very fruity. Yeah. Like, That's why I was not, thinking the barley wine thing. And normally yeah. I'm like, oh, it's like black currant and like these real. This one, no, has like some light cherry and yep. um, maybe some raspberry to it. I mean, it's like a lighter. It's almost fruit. like an under, or like not not underripe, but a slightly underripe strawberry. Yeah. yeah. A little bit in there, I too. I think you guys are going to love that yeah. monstery one. Good. Actually, I, I think that makes sense because being a weeded bourbon, right? Yeah. I mean, Weller's going to have all of those sweet notes in there. Mm-hmm. So the Monchery one is, uh, it's got the Ballatin and uh, Montmorency cherries, mm. and then they brew it with oats and brown sugar. Mm. So it's it's like that sounds delicious. Sweet candied cherries almost, but not not quite as sweet because you get the brown sugar sweetness instead of like the cherry sweet. Yeah, but it's still a little like candy cherry sweet. That's cool. It's pretty now, good. Now this massively changed the cigar for me. It did oh, me sure too. It, did. it completely killed. All the high fruit notes out of it, which yeah. you would have thought this one seemed to have all those, it would have embraced it and supported it instead of just, it doesn't, just it knocked totally it off. knocked it off. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. a lot of the stouts will do that uh, with the beers. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty selective with the beers that I pair with my cigars because it's, it's kind of hard sometimes to uh, Man. know what flavors you're going to get out of it. Because like like, everything just changed from from soft fruit and like cinnamon spice to oof, man i don't even know like i'm i'm getting almost like vanilla at this point so run See, run the I'm glass getting, around like any vanilla from it that's interesting with about. between the Tur- both of them. between the both yeah. Yeah. turn your glass like this and then look through the glass the it is purple yes it's a very very oh, yeah purple yeah. red reddish purple almost like a honey a purple honey or something hmm. on the yeah. sides How about that's that? got a pretty funky color to it not in a bad way, good way. Hmm. So you want as we as we sip through these, you want to talk about day one, day two kind of things at Absolutely. the show. Yeah, yeah. Tell us okay. about uh, tell us about some PCA, man. So uh, we got out there first day, which we got there a day early. Um, the um, well, we got there on a th- on Thursday, basically to do some sightseeing. Um, Lisa really loved it. I'm not a big fan of Vegas, but she really loved it. She got to see a lot of things. The only thing we didn't get to take her to was the Bellagio. She wanted to see the the fountains and all that, but <clears throat> we didn't get to see that. But we did get to see a lot of other things there too, and had some great food. Um, did you stop by the one cigar lounge at the bottom of the escalator in uh, Fuente? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuente. Yeah, we yeah. had a cigar there. I like that place. I had a I had a pretty high end Opus X, and it tasted like a Fuente. Yeah. I just the people there were really nice. Like, I, I it, they were it, nice. It's priced what you would expect it to be from a Fuente Lounge. But yes, it's everyone was like super nice. Like I was, I, w- I did not have high hopes going in there when I visited that place. Uh, yeah, I mean it was just pretty nice. Looked, I will but. say, um, you know, no shade towards them or anything, but their cocktails weren't that great. Yeah, but they're a cigar lounge. Were better, huh? It's a bummer. That was kind of a bummer because I had some an, an insane cocktails out there. Were really good. But that one was a little of a letdown for both Lisa and I. So, That's but a so we yeah we went there, um, did all the touristy stuff, got to see the sphere, which is 
Yeah, incredible! Yeah, Holy yeah. crap! Huge. That thing's amazing. The the monorail. We had tickets for the monorail for the whole time we were there, and it goes literally right next to it. Yeah. We almost reach out and touch it, and it's it's massive and it's so cool. So that's something I would like to do. I would love to go to a concert inside. Heck yeah, That'd they're be sweet. stupid expensive to yeah. go to get tickets yeah. for that, but for, for it'd be really amazing. Dollars you can. Uh, Rent it out to put a fifteen second ad on it. Perfect. Yeah, Let's just, do it. You know, final thirty. Is that really what it is? I think so. I saw Holy something because, like, well, maybe that was just for Super Bowl because they were renting it out for ad space. But yeah, it's yeah. expensive as shit. Well, then uh, the first day of the show was all education day. They had um, classes. Yeah, different classes, and it was it was well pretty well done. Um, the one that really stuck stuck out to me stuck out to me was the um, La Aurora put on a pairing. Um, oh, nice. A little demonstration. And they had um, the La Aurora 120, and then they paired that with the El Leon Jimenez rum, Dominican rum, and it was delicious. That it was, was the rum you were talking it's about. It's probably right? the best rum I've ever tasted. Yeah, see, I don't drink a lot of rum, so we got to. I don't either. We got to do rum one now. Um, so I'm, gonna tr- I'm on the list now. As soon as they start distributing into more into America and in Indiana, I'll find out about that. They said it could be as early as. This summer, but more than likely it might be first next year. So That's we're gonna, we will get that in here. It paired perfectly with that cigar. They did a great job pairing that. So that was kind of a cool thing. Um, then there was a couple other the, the, the PCA had their little thing and the Padron. They did the keynote speaking and I know you like that one. That was actually really cool. I mean they the cigar they gave us was the 1926 and I'm like oh. Oh, yes. So we smoked that during the during the presentation. They had their whole family there. Oh, really? Uh, which they are a hundred percent family. I mean, every everyone, everyone is there. They had their thir- one kid, thirteen year old. He was up there, and you know he he made it comment on the you know on the microphone, talked, to, and then we went to the booth the next day, and he's setting up accounts and selling cigars. <laughs> it's like good job, man. So yeah. the the family the family is all involved all the way across the board. It's not so, quite as legal in America as it is. No, no. Well, I mean, he was just taking account information. Yeah. He, I mean, he wasn't smoking wasn't cigars smoking cigar there. I'm there. sure he's smoking cigars down in, in um, Nicaragua, but he wasn't here. So Yeah, I need your social security number. Please. Exactly. <laughs> Credit so, card number. So that's kind of cool. And that was the first day. And then um, we went out that night. And um, I know Will had recommended going to um, uh, Batista's. Batista's. Did uh, you make it there? It's called Batista's Hole in the Wall. And it's actually the whole name of the thing. And it's funny because I thought he was just saying it's a hole in the wall. No, it's called Batista's, Batista's hole in the wall. But it's, no, it's Batista's yeah. hole in the wall. And um, some of the best Italian I've ever had. It was so okay. freaking good. Yeah, I've never been there. Um, but it was one that we were talking to some some locals, and we just asked them, "Was like, okay, if, if uh, not the touristy stuff, what's the place we should go that you guys go to when you want to have a really good meal that you'd recommend?" Two different people told us Batista's, and Will told us Batista. I guess we're going to Batista's. Hmm. So we went there, Taco Bell. and it was delicious. <laughs> Taco Bell. The cantina one, so you can buy booze. That, that reminds yeah. me. I, I went to Augusta one time for work when I had my military contract, and I got an Uber somewhere because there's nothing in fucking Augusta. Uh, I asked the guy, I was like, what, what's good to eat around here? He's like, what's a good like local place I can eat at? Buddy was so fucking serious when he told me this, too. He looked back at me like, while he's driving, he's like, Zaxby's. <laughs> Zaxby's <laughs> fucking love Zaxby's. You ever had a Zaxby salad? That shit is so good. I'm taking you to Zaxby's. I was like, oh, guess we're going to Zaxby's. <laughs> going to Zaxby's. Right. <laughs> so I had a different experience. Yeah, yeah, I can but, see that. Yeah. Zaxby's. Anyways, <laughs> so yeah, that and that was pretty much the first day. We we did the touristy stuff and then went Almost out to eat up. that night and stuff. What was Lisa's favorite evening. touristy thing then? Um, we'll have to ask her. I don't know okay. for sure what her favorite thing was. I, I mean, she loved all of it. She she loved the being out of the house. Yes, I mean, she loved being out of the house, not yeah. at the lounge, not on her computer. Yeah. Get, you guys, I, I know you won't believe this. She left her computer here. Oh, look at that. I know, I know, wow. I know, I know. Cheers, Lisa. Here's to you. She was trying to find a way to take it. Then she's oh, like, no. I don't want to leave out in the room the whole time. And I'm like, see what really move, happened. There you go. Yeah. She, she wasn't going to be able to be on it anyway. No. She no. sent Rob back into the house and said, hey, will you grab my computer? He said, yeah, I put oh. it in the back seat already. You know? I, I do need to back <laughs> this up. I need to back this up first. So... Our trip started, so we were flying out at 8 o'clock, and the night before, I'm thinking, yeah, let's just get up. We'll, we'll, we'll head out you know, a little, about 6, a little after 6, and we'll head down there, and we'll have plenty of time. So I wake up at 5, 
and I, I get a quick shower. And um, I woke up at five and I said, we probably should go ahead and get up and get ready. I don't, I'm not feeling like we haven't given ourselves enough time. So she got up, I got up, I took a quick shower, we got ready, took off, went to the airport. We get on the tram, come inside, and Lisa's like, oh, crap, I forgot my purse in the back seat. Oh, no. So she goes out there. I'm waiting. I'm going to check the bags. Well, she didn't have, she has to have her ID for her bag. Yep. So I'm waiting and waiting. And um, the lady's like, um, you have seven minutes to get that bag checked. Otherwise, it's not going to make it out there. I'm like, oh, shit. So I call Lisa. She's not going to be there in seven minutes. But by the way, she was on the tram. So I got credited back the bag price that she paid and then paid it again. Got it on with like 30 seconds to spare. Oh. And uh, she comes in there. We literally, Walk as fast as we can to our gate. And as we're walking to our gate, we're walking onto the plane. And I'm like, if we'd have waited until we thought we could make it, we would have never made it. Right. So that was that was on us. That's how our day started. She's running through the parking lot from the car, <laughs> and there's rabbits everywhere in the middle of the what freaking the parking lot. I don't know what it was. There was like hundreds of rabbits just running everywhere. And she's like chasing rabbits. I'm like, oh, good for you. <laughs> so that was our star. She actually got an extra 2,000 steps that day than I did just by doing that. Yeah. Whack a 20,000 steps our first day. Oh, yeah, I believe yeah, it. Yeah, that was yeah. lovely. That was lovely. Heck, yeah. Well, so that was awesome. that was our first couple days. That's great. So we well, get your, I know, like, why don't you like Vegas? All the fucking walking. I don't, I don't mind want to walk everywhere. I, I I don't want to walk everywhere. I want to I want to get to where I want to go and enjoy it and then yeah, get back. That's true. I'm, I'm, but that's why I would just hang out at a lounge. Like I hung out at Monte Cristo for like two days. We were going to go to Monte Cristo's. We just didn't have time. Yeah, that place is really nice too. Now I will Super say my favorite time. lounge I went to. Um, shout out to a girl we met out there, Chelsea. It's her. It's her and her dad's oh, lounge. Yeah, it's called picture. Smoke Smoke Cigar Lounge. They were up for um, best cigar bar of the West. And then, um, but Fox has won that, and Fox is, they're just a behemoth in the yeah. industry. Um, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah, so, but, but. Oh, good for them. But they, they've only been in business for five months. Oh, shit. And they got that nomination that's to, to at least get yeah, it nominated. That's so that's, that's incredible. But she was a real, real nice girl. We really, I mean, we talked to her a lot that night. And um, she, I mean, literally could have been our daughter. She reminds us so much of our oldest daughter. I mean, they are like almost the same person. So we had a great time talking to her, but so that was our fa my favorite lounge while we were out there. That's great. Yeah, Mike, have you been to Vegas like just for fun, or is it always for business? No, it was always a work trip. Yeah, me too. And see, that's why I don't too. like it because I've yeah. never been personally, and I'm always on somebody else's schedule. Yeah, I never get to do any of the things yeah. that I might want to do. So I'm, I'm I I want to say that I hate Vegas, that I don't want to go, but I feel like I have to I go one it. time. I got to yeah. go one time just like just because just on a trip. Yeah. yeah, but yeah. see, I would if I if I did a trip out there for to Vegas, I would have one day on the strip, and then I would be going to the Hoover Dam. I'd be going to the um yeah, the Grand Canyon that. stuff like that. I want to see that stuff more than I want to be on the strip. I'm not I'm not going in and dropping all kinds of cash at every. I mean, every hotel has a casino. You yeah. don't have to go yeah, everywhere to no. go to casinos. Just go downstairs. Slot machines in the bathroom. Oh, shit, slot machines <laughs> in the mach in the airport. Yeah. So it it's it is what it in the is. airport. I like to go gamble over at Hooters. It's great. I'm sure you probably can out there, can't <laughs> yeah. you? Uh, no, there's a Hooters hotel and casino. Oh, I was gonna say you just. Yes, I've actually been there. Yeah, that's yeah. funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's a ga it's a gamble. It was, a, it was a work trip, and everybody was like, "What do you want?" And a bunch of guys were like, "Let's go to Hooters." All right. Oh, All right. I mean, I just don't like having wings. another room. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, shit, those are practically the most closed females out there <laughs> in the Hooters house. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, walking the, walking down there, there's. People pretty much just naked with little pasties on their Yeah, nipples. but you don't have to pay the Hooters girl to take a picture with them. That's true. That's, that's, that's very true. Right. 25 bucks to take a picture with the street hoes. <laughs> yeah. Probably, yeah. 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 Did anyone give At you least. a pamphlet for a hooker? Uh, a couple tried, and yeah. I just walked by them, so that's a, fine. That's a thing. Like, that's, oh, it is a big what thing. What a weird fucking yeah. thing. Like, yeah, the bunny ranch thing grew up on the East Coast. There. Like, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Midwest and East Coast. Like, well, That's not normal out here. No. Was, like The first time I went out there, and dude's handing me a pamphlet, and he's like, pick a girl. I'm like what? Pick a, pick a girl. Pick one. Yeah. Now like, I will say pass, prostitution pass. is still illegal in Las Vegas. 
but outside it's, of it. But outside of it. Yeah. Yes. It's like a county away or something. Yep. There's, yeah. That's exactly it. Yeah. It's near the salt flats, just out in the middle of nowhere. Right. You just right. find a hooker. <laughs> just walking stayed in the salt flats. Stayed on the side of the street. <laughs> she's, she's walking yeah. in the salt flats. Salty hoe. Yeah, you're just out there driving <laughs> in the salt flats, and there, there she is. That's she's a her salty shit. hoe. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, that was, and we can we can get into some more here, and then we I can go and talk yeah. about the the actual show itself too, because it was a really good show. We For should anybody probably watching rinse. on YouTube that was that was kind of watching while you guys were having the conversation about the show. I've been sitting here for the last five damn minutes trying to figure out this cigar and and beer pairing because it's doing some weird funky flavors. It is to me too, and I'm trying to figure it out, and I can't. Like I'm, I just can't. I'm enjoying the beer a lot i'm losing all the cigar that's exactly how i feel and it's like i, I want to enjoy the cigar yeah and whatever flavor is coming out yeah from from the cigars is just i don't know all Gone. the niceties are getting lost so yeah. i would not Ooh. okay you got something I, I took a lot of um i took a big drink of that beer it is very nutty when you take a drink that big is it yeah maybe that's what it was maybe it was yeah, just nutty. I don't That's know. That's good. Thank you. You got it, brother. We did kind of forget to put water on the table. Yeah, I know. So, I guess. I'll... I've got some in here if you guys need it. Okay. Heck yeah. You just hit that. Hit everything, man. Hit all of it. <laughs> so, Damn. going from that one, since that one kind of started with the fruit, I think we should go with the Moncherie next. Okay. Because that one's going to compliment that one because the other one's just the last one is just a regular stout so and same with the cbs that's just a regular stout so but you're just going to start pouring like free beers yeah, for but people CBS, when they come in because cbs no has all the maple these. goodness unparalleled oh. oh speaking of maple did you see uh whiskey acres posted when they were going to do their uh saw that maple barrel release again we got to try that when we were up there and it, yeah well back here good too stuff so good so good speaking of maple don't ever bet on the maple leafs no, fuck those guys no. Too. Yeah. 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 Fuck the Leafs. Don't fuck include the them in pins. your parlays. They'll fuck you every time. Yep. Hey, I broke my parlay, though. My uh, uh my yeah, dry, you, yep. congratulations on that, man. Yes. Finally it wasn't a, a lot. It was like fifty three bucks, but I picked all the winners for men's basketball. I took the money line for um, what day was that? Sunday. I think it was Sunday. Um, I mean that's pretty good to be able like to get the money line. Yeah, on those. five or six games. Uh, yeah. yeah, it wasn't a lot. It was like a $4 bet. I got like 53 bucks. So I watched, I'm back to where I started. I watched almost every single game. I did not watch anything from Sunday about 2 o'clock on. But I bet on zero. Yeah, I, I don't. Just, I don't bet college basketball I don't because either. it's the tournament, man. Yeah, anything I, I mean, can so hard. Yeah. It usually it is, does. Yeah. And, and I don't know if Vegas picks on. any better than anybody else. Yeah, yeah you got Kareem Abdul-Jabbar moving on. Indiana State got <laughs> screwed not getting into the tournament. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's they did. Poor shit. Yeah, that is crazy. And I know Michigan State, you know, always has a chance, but still, Indiana State should have been in. Yeah, they do. While or we're talking should. about sports, you got uh, Dusty May from uh, Florida Atlantic going to Michigan since Juan Howard left, left, fired, oh, whatever. Good yep, for him. Fired. Good for him. Yeah. Fired. Uh, Deserved it. Hot news is that... I don't know. I saw a post this morning about Louisville saying they hired somebody from Charleston, but I can't believe that that would be the hire. Uh, yeah, you never know. They had showed interest in hiring Richard Patino from New Mexico. Uh, Richard Patino, not Rick Patino. This Dick. is Rick Patino's son. Yes, this is Little Dick. Little Dick, yes. not Big Dick. Big Dick is in uh, yes. St. John's. St. John's, yeah. Yes. Um, got fired from Louisville some years ago for... A lot of bad shit. Undisclosed reasons. Um, his son was an assistant there, and uh, I think it was like 08 and 09, and then went to somewhere else, SMU, I think, as an assistant. And then he went to, he came back to Louisville as an assistant under Rick uh, from like 17 to 19, and then took over New Mexico. He would be a good takeover for Louisville because he knows the, well, he knew the program. Mm -hmm. He knows the city. He knew that program at one point in his career. Uh, and it's well, it's kind of funny because like the Rick Richard thing, like every everyone on Facebook is like, I can't believe they would hire him back. He was a terrible head coach and blah blah blah. And like, no no no, it's little Richard. dick, little dick, little dick, little dick, just Richard. So. Quick quick fuel update. They play tonight against the Walleye. Go Walleye! Wait no no. 
<laughs> wrong uh, fucking team. What's wrong with you? I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Disgrace. The walleye's been kicking, walleye's the been shit kicking out of ass. They're incredible. They're in first place in the division. The yeah, I mean, are... if they could win, the, what, what you were saying, if they could yeah. win one of the ne- one of the one of the two, two or three they, games they, they, they play, where are they the from? walleye. What's the walleye? Toledo. 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 Oh, fucking they're Toledo. and they're actually Toledo. fuck Ohio. They're they're crushing it this year. They are. Except they for Dayton. Are. But hopefully, you Maybe know, we, too. if we can take one of those two, we can feel really good going into the playoffs. Well, it would be really good is if whoever the walleye's playing under gets into the playoffs for the AHL. Correct. And they can move up all these players that are playing well for them, and then yes. we can kick their ass. Yeah, if their <laughs> AHL team does not make the playoffs, then it's going to be even worse. Yeah, mm-hmm. their sister team right? is they'll the send a bullets. bunch of people down. The, it's it's the, not. I'm just making shit up. That actually could be true. It'd be funny. You might actually be yeah. right. I don't know. Where's the mullet toss at? Uh, the mullet toss. That's in Florida. That is it, Florida. Bama. I'll be oh, going yeah. to that this year. Well, it's not Ohio, so that's probably not. It's them. not. I was going to talk about it. But the you farm know, league kind of line closer, up. but end of April, I'll be yeah. going to the the mullet fish toss at the Florida. Bama. Not mullet like yeah. me mullet. No, but lots of guys get mullet wigs. <laughs> Some people actually cut their hair into mullets for for the mullet toss. Well, of course. And you throw a fish from from Florida into Alabama and see how far you can throw it. Nice. Yep. Nice. Yep. So I think it's kind of awesome. Do that, dude. My wife and I oh, are taking going. a vacation yeah. to go to a to bar. Huck mullets. That's you it. You should just go and. I'm, I'm going to try and sign up and, and throw. I mean, I'm going to be terrible. Right. I know Who that. Cares? I don't care. I'm going to be like, hell yeah. What you do that. is you go up and you find the smallest one you can find. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I want to go. I want to yeah. shot put a mullet. Shot put I think a mullet. you have to throw it like fishmongers yeah, like, do. Right, like at the fish market, it's got to be like lame. underhand. And oh, you have to go underhand. I think you do. Yeah, and you can't like put sand on your hands. There's all these rules. So I can't right? dress up as Miss Trunchbull and. Oh no, people dress and up. Huck it people, like... yeah. I mean, they they dress up a lot, but no, you can't. I don't think you can shot put it. Son of a bitch. I know. By the way, sh- out. shout out to Isaiah, um, cigar rings. Ooh, yeah, I haven't made this, it that far This yet. band came perfectly off because it's cigar rings, and Isaiah has this you know fascination with cigar rings, so. I've got a mini backpack for him that says cigar rings all over it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Nice. That way he can take it to work with him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's some, there's some bread notes that come out of this cigar. Uh, and By itself? I, yeah, well. Have you gotten into the So I, I got a little bit okay. into this one, and, and yes, it's, it's yeah, lighter. Yeah, sourdough toast. Two sourdough two. toast, I would totally buy that. Yep, that yep. is what it is. You're yep. right. And this, this one definitely pairs much better with the cigar. What toast? Sourdough toast. Oh, hmm. yeah. I it it that still yet. overruns the fruit notes. Like you don't get the yeah. Subtleties, you don't get any of the fruit. But all the nice low bready notes come through. Yeah, I like this. This beer is actually. Wow. I like this even better. I like it quite oh, a bit man. better, actually. Not even cigar. Like first sip off of that, I'm getting like cherry pie. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But like homemade cherry pie yeah. with sour cherries with the sugar yeah. added. Not those I mean, gas station no. tasty cake shit. No, like, no. Like you mean you you don't eat McDonald's cherry pies anymore? I don't eat fucking McDonald's, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I can't even go. You know, I will say, they make the best breakfast sandwich. The egg, uh, the sausage and egg McMuffin from there is the only thing I'll ever eat at McDonald's, and it's delicious. It is pretty good, but so nothing I by, else. I like this morning. I live by Get Go, and it's across the street from a uh, McDonald's in New Pal. Yeah. And I would rather go to breakfast at Gitco. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, you really can't knock but the it's gas like a stations like, as much as you used to. It used no. to be like, oh, I'm going to go get a roller hot dog or whatever. And you'd it's feel literally the same Terrible. Shit. But, dude, I mean, there's some of these gas stations now that have some of the best food you could get. Like, yeah, delis. For those that are delis, not Midwesterners, yep. I mean, you don't know about the breaded tenderloin sandwich. That's, a, that's definitely an still a Midwestern one. thing. You still have not tried one? That's just like a sin. I'm scared. Just get one from Broadway down here. It, no, I think great. it's gotta be. I think it's gotta be from from your place. Oh, you want to go over to Crawfordsville and go to the Sunoco gas station? Yeah, they you, have. You can do they that. Have I will say Broadway's down the street here, and it's one. delicious too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Broadway's good. That is um, pawn shop. I was thinking about yeah. going, maybe doing one. Pawn shops. A real. You've had the ones at pawn shop. Yeah, I've had a yeah. couple of them. Okay, pawn shop. They're great. I don't know. It's hard to screw up a good. I mean, a tenderloin. The meat is yeah, what screws it so. up, because you'll get some that got just gristle throughout, and they're not that great. Man, but, look, we made it almost an hour without talking about food. Oh, Holy shit, that's incredible! That is incredible. Well, we talked yeah. about your dinner, but that didn't count. We didn't no, that didn't. It we didn't need it. Yeah. 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 No, we While we're, we're talking about food, me and Jen went to Fox Garden the other day. Uh, oh no! They have their new chef uh, that took over. Uh, he was the, I guess, the private chef for the Colts. 
Okay. And did All some right. stuff at a couple other places in Indy. I don't remember. I have to look it up again. Um, Will said the soft shell crab was really good. I love soft shell crab. I concur. Crab. The Hard soft shell crab oh. was very good. It was kind of weird. It was on Never a seen sesame Indiana. bun. Um, I think half Wait, of what? Mine, on yeah, they served bun? it on a sesame bun. They made it. It was a sandwich. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, deep fried on a sandwich. Oh, like pickles and lettuce. It was really good. I'm sure it was it good, was really but good. man, I love soft shell crab right on the plate. Just eat oh that yeah. Shit. So yeah. so yeah. I I think like mine was like maybe a little underdone to where like I could still peel the top of the skin off and it wasn't crunchy uh. or maybe it sat for a minute. Uh, but I just peeled it off and ate the rest of it. Like it was fine. You just couldn't like bite through it and like take a bite. Really. Um, but just like on that one piece, like there was just like one piece right in the middle of okay. the top. Um, is that so on the menu for a while? Because I mean, usually soft shell crab is like a week or two periods. Yeah, the only time you can get so it. So I don't know. So like Fox Gardens thing has always been their like rotating menu and they change things and they have these specials and they've already gotten like new dipping sauces. Like their ranch is different. Their honey mustard's different. They got these new sandwiches. Uh, there's no more Brussels sprouts on the side. So, well, Lisa, I don't if you're know listening to this, we're, this, we got to go to Foscar and get me some soft yeah. shell crab. I, so, man. I don't know with the new chef. I don't know what their plan is to, if they're going to keep doing this rotating menu. I'm not sure, but I bet they do. That was one of their staples. Yeah. I mean, that's what that's what Bongies does. They yeah. bought Bongies out. Still if you guys good. don't know that, yeah. um, same same. I'm sure it's going to be the same philosophy. Jake's done a great job. As long with as you that can company. get the Perkinsville pork. That's yes, all, and they'll that's, always that's have that. Got to stay on the menu. They, it, they have the two, they have two things: the Perkinsville pork, and there's one other one. I can't remember what the other one was. Mm. Those they said duck the, breast, we duck go breast. There. That's yeah, it. The duck they'll always have it on the menu. The only cool thing about the duck, the disappointing thing about the duck breast is they used to have it because there was a guy that was a regular there. He might have actually been one of the you know people that found it. I can't remember for sure, but he um, was a duck hunter. And all the duck oh. when that guy when those when they owned it before Jake bought it, all the duck was from his hunting trips. It was so they don't have that anymore because that guy stopped hunting, mm. and uh, so they're getting other duck. I'm sure it's still fine. Yeah, yeah. but it, that's even a cooler story to hear. You oh, dude over there just he went hunting yesterday, and here you got some ducks. <laughs> there you and, go. That's kind of yeah. Cool. It was good. Um, I'm still happy with it. Jen got a chicken shawarma, but it was like fried shawarma. Huh. Kind of weird. It was good. I liked it. Jen was controversial. Yeah, I I thought she was a little uh, she was put up in arms. Some of the things. Yeah, she said it tasted more like a honey lemon chicken breast, which was kind of weird for like. Does she not adapt to change very well? I don't think she I doesn't use her words. We we did determine <laughs> she, she doesn't use her words, words earlier, That's a good, didn't she? Yeah. <laughs> she's she's not using her words effectively. Use yeah. your words. Use your words. <laughs> no, it was good. I'm excited to see what you know. All, all, all I'm do. hearing in so, my ears right now is. You can be wrong, Rob. <laughs> yeah, you can be wrong, Rob. It's okay. Jen is out getting tattooed today. Nice. Uh, Neck tattoos? Butt tattoos? Butt tattoos? Butt tattoos. Whatever it takes. Yeah. Okay. No, she's doing her right arm today, I think. Ooh. She sent me a picture. It's just a bunch of flowers and stuff, but it's like her whole arm. It's crazy. Cool. Yeah. Good for her. Hopefully, she'll sit that long. I don't I know. I thought she was going to do the classic B on each butt cheek. Yeah, B. Yep. Bob. Yeah. Bob. Bend over, it's Bob. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. I don't know. For some reason, I can kind of imagine Jim doing I like do a it. drive-by mooning of somebody. It seems like she would do something like Who's double Bob? B right there. Yeah. Who's Bob? <laughs> uh, that's Sorry, still man. a great Sorry, joke. Sorry, we're drinking strong beer. I mean, I'm, I, that drink might have still been kicking in from last night for me. Oh, oh God. Man. Yeah. I might have been a little bit, but a, still a little bit. Yeah. Rob yeah. did yeah. say yeah. the other day that he wanted to do an episode where we just get annihilated. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. That might be today. Who knows? We should get Will yeah. on that one for sure. Oh, we should yeah. definitely 100%. have Will on that one. So, yeah. Will went to Colorado to vale. last week. To Vail, Colorado. Ooh, to bougie Colorado. I've been to Vail a couple times when I was I know you have. Yeah. And it's... It's a bougie. It's town. bougie. It's yeah, cool, but it it's looks nice. It's beautiful up yeah, there. It's beautiful. Yeah. I know. Uh, that was actually when I first started falling in love with the Colorado Avalanche. Was I took a trip out there to visit a buddy. He he was living in Cheyenne, Wyoming, but working in Denver. And well, that's a that, different scene there. Yeah, but that high that interstate between there is no speed limit, so you can drive as fast as you want to get to work. But we actually got into the foothills of that. the Rockies and walked from Cheyenne and drove all the way up all the way up to all the resorts. And we went from 90 degree weather to a blizzard at the top. Yep. Oh, that's how And Oregon it was, was amazing. Yeah. It was so cool. It was an all day trip, but it was amazing. That's how it was when we stayed in Portland. It was like 
65, maybe 70, you know, muggy, rainy, whatever. Midwest or uh, Typical West Coast. Yeah, West yeah. Coast weather. Yeah. Uh, and then we went to uh, Mount Hood because we were bored yeah. didn't have anything else to do. So we drove over there, and it's like 10 degrees and feet of snow, and that was a hell of a change. Yeah. It's worth the drive, though. It's like a three-hour oh, yeah. drive from, from yeah. Portland, but it was yeah. better than getting robbed again. Yeah. See, it's kind of weird. West Coast weather, it's not like here where – you can get 80 degrees and then snow like in the same day. You can get that. You just have to drive to it. Like, yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, you got to go out of your zip hours, code. Like this place is always 100 degrees, but if you go two hours that way, mm. you'll be in the snow. And yeah. The snow will never come here, and it will never be 100 degrees over there. Look, that's why the Midwest is great. You don't have to leave your house for that. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you just stay <laughs> there. Sit outside. <laughs> to Rob's point, you don't have to walk to, to, to get to it. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> you can just sit at God. home. And be no walking. Yeah, God. no walking at all. Two different. Fat guy walking is not fun. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, no, man. No. Oh, no. God. Man, I'll tell you. I, I went to a concert on Sunday. Nice. At JJ Gray and Mofro. Stood for five hours because oh, general shit. admission. And you said? And it was the best concert I've ever yeah, seen. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, man. His new album, Alusti, it, it fits right into his whole, he's a, a Jacksonville, Florida guy. The whole band is from that area, Georgia, Florida, and yeah, I mean, if you don't know J.J. Gray and Mofro, that's M-O-F-R-O, Mofro. Mofro. Yep, that's the band name. But absolutely fantastic show. Got the chance to meet him um, and get a picture with him. Super, super nice guy. But, yeah, five hours of standing. Boy, yeah. that'll that'll just wreck you. And, obviously, it wasn't, like, cushy carpet you're standing on either. No, no. <laughs> The only thing was I was – I, I bought the VIP ticket, so we got in first, sound and I was able to yeah go to the sound check, and then they, they play let a us, couple songs other than sound check for you. Um, yeah, yeah, Sweet. actually. So uh, one of the guys there, like um, I think it's King Hummingbird, is a song off of either his first or second album that he never ever plays at a show, and he's had some band members that have been replaced over the years. So you had to try um, to figure it out. So he was like, "Yeah, Piece none of the together. band. I can't play it tonight because none of the band knows it." Well, a few guys knew it. Um, he forgot the bridge, but he did play it. And it was fantastic. So it was just super cool. It was like 50 Better people. Better than saying no. Yeah, yeah cool. 50 people there and then, you know, 1,100 for the concert. So wow, um, it it's was a great intimate. time. But, yeah, I feel you on the walking thing or standing or whatever. Yeah, yeah I felt so stiff by the end of the night. Yeah. It was like, whoa. I was so See, disappointed. Sitting thing. Yeah. Sitting? I have a sitting problem. Well, you, you do have you, a sitting you, problem. Yeah, you, yeah. Can't you stand sit at all. I know. At all. Like, but he, I'm amazed you sit here the whole time. But he is, he's also half of one of us. So. That's true. That's true. Put some weight on, buddy. Then maybe you'll slow down a little bit. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. I'm trying. I'm drinking a lot I'm of beer. I'm not trying that hard. <laughs> yeah. no. Don't try, please. Don't try. It's no, not where it sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Then you're always like, shit, I need to lose that. But yeah. yeah I got on the Peloton this morning. I've been doing my exercises. I got on the Peloton. You. That's the one where my... somebody yells at you on a video screen, right? So it's fucking annoying. And I mute it. <laughs> Pick up the pace, pussy. I. <laughs> Chris but Gordon. The worst shit Shout is out. like they're fucking yelling at you while they're doing that and they're not pedaling. So like the first like week we had the Peloton when I'm watching these classes and this dumb bitch is yelling at me to like get my ass up and do this and she's not doing it. Yeah, but she's got like an eight pack, dude. She didn't need to do it. Either. I'm like, bitch, you fucking do yeah, it. Yeah, she already did it for four hours yes. earlier that day. Like, yes. You do it. Now she's just got to try That's and true. look pretty while she's yelling at you. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I mute it and I turn the subtitles on. So what I do is I do the power zone ones where, like, what I did is, like, you, you do this, like, test to see, like, what your zones are. And it's one through seven. Okay. And it, you have to figure out, like, what your cadence is uh, and figure out how much output you have to put in, blah, blah, blah. So that's, like, the first test. And then after you do that, like, you have your zones that you ride in. So now cool. I do power zone rides. And it's 30 to 75 minutes, depending on the class that I choose. Um and I just watch for the subtitles to say switch zones. Yeah. It's, it's just as easy as that. And it's three That's or four good. minutes in each so zone. So you just ignore when they're yelling at you? Yeah, I mute it. It's fucking mm -hmm. muted. I don't listen to that shit. I'll turn on Netflix. I mean, is it all caps in the subtitles when they're yelling? Yeah. <laughs> is it really? It misses a lot of words, so it's like auto-detect. It, it's like, it, it, get it, I, <laughs> gear, move, ass. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever watched the reels that I put out on YouTube, some of them, it, it's pretty intuitive. I have auto-detect. Yeah. But some of them, like I did the one with Mark the other day. <laughs> yeah, I saw it was so. little kings. It said little kegs. Yes. Little kegs. Not so little like, kegs. It was yeah. little kings. Yeah. Little kings. From concept to creation, both are visual specializes in bringing your ideas to life. They'll turn ordinary moments into extraordinary stories. Both are visuals is your one stop shop for all things visual. 
Be sure to like and follow on all social media at both are visuals. Yep. So yeah. sometimes I go back and, and read them, but. When's the last time you had a Little Kings? Fuck. God, I remember drinking those in college. Right. That was our beer because we were bougie. 10, 10 <laughs> right. 12 years. I don't know, a long time. Oh, yeah. little bitty bottles. Oh. Yeah. yeah, the cream ale. We would All literally right. go, yeah. when I was at school, we'd go and we'd, we'd have our lunch break. We'd go buy a, a case of Little Kings, and we'd sit out in the parking lot and drink the entire case, then go back to school. Shit, we're doing beer today, and we didn't buy Little Kings. Oh, uh, that's okay. Oh, man. Missed that's opportunity. Really totally good. fine. Guess we'll have to wait till next totally year. Totally fine. Dang it. I'm sure it probably tastes really horrible it now. It probably does. <laughs> Compared oh, to everything else we drink. Yeah. I mean, all we all were doing back then was just drinking, thinking we were bougie, just chugging. Yeah. Them. It's fine. Man, like seven or eight years ago, I was, I was already, you know, pretty lit up one night, and somebody shows up to a party with like a 30-pack of Strohs. Oh. And I started drinking. I'm like, holy shit, this is so good. Because you were already drunk. I was already drunk. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I like bought one and tasted it. Like a few weeks later, I'm like, well, that was a bad decision. The very yeah. first, so I, I say that like the Taylor Barrel Proof was the first bourbon I ever had that was mm-hmm. good good bourbon. Yeah. When I was in high school, we were drinking Kentucky Gentleman. Oh. So like someone would bring a Kentucky Gentleman to the party and that's what we were drinking on. But well, like that was, you know, we were stupid kids. Like I'm we not proud of it, but I mine was Crown. Oh, when I it was, was that school. or uh, Kentucky Tavern. The only reason why it was Crown was because I would go out to the uh, the local hooks better at, than mine. <laughs> hooks at the time. Hooks drugstore. And now at CVS, I would go out there. I was 16 years old. And I'd walk in and grab a bag of Crown, and no one up front was expecting the six, uh, 16 year old to come in there and spend 30 bucks on a bottle of whiskey. Yeah, yeah. So I'd go in there and buy it. Drink it, and by the time I was like six weeks into doing that every week, I go in there and grab a case of beer. Didn't even question me. Yeah, you got to be in your mid twenties from New Jersey if you're walking into a drugstore buying crown. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't yeah. know what was wrong with you guys. I was drinking right proper whiskey. I was having myself some Jim Beam. Yeah, starting at fifteen, man, that was my my go to. Yeah, what's yeah. funny, like here in like what was Isaiah's? Like, wasn't one of his first ones like Makers or something, or was it uh, Jack Daniels? I don't remember yeah, what his was. It was something, something that was like well known that yeah. wasn't awful. Yeah, but it's funny because like these some of these people that we're friends with are younger. Yeah, and so like they have access to you know more more things than than I and, did when yeah. I was a kid. Yeah. And I'm sure when when you guys were kids, like it's just different. Like yeah. everything's different. You know, everything's different. Yeah. No kids going to a liquor store saying, "Hey, Mister, will you buy me some Little Kings?" <laughs> no, I was, no, Jim Beam no. and Swisher Strike, baby. Give me some zombie dust. <laughs> I'll buy some three Floyds, please. So I would smoke Swisher Sweets when I was, you know, 15, 16, 17. Sure. Funny thing was, by the time I hit 17, I got off the Swisher Sweets and I switched to a pipe. Oh, okay. And I was smoking a pipe. I'm a 17 Meth. year old. No, man. Like, a, <laughs> you think. That, that, that's what would have happened if I wasn't born in 79, right? If I was born in like 99, it probably would have been meth pipe. That's right. That was great. That was good. I like that. But no, it was like, it was kind of funny. You Went know, straight to, the, to the, the Willow Pot Still Bong. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I've smoked out of many apples. <laughs> always, a, always a Coke can. Uh-huh. Well, whatever, beer can. Can. Yep. Yeah, I'm still good at making a can to, you know. <laughs> can pipe. I just heard I was a Coke kid. So I'm just thinking, like, okay, you <laughs> I'm didn't do that. I was kid. a meth and Coke kid, apparently. Yeah. Wow. 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 I'm like, shit, this took a weird it turn. Did. It did. really sucked. Shout out to the DeShong family. <laughs> Man, should have been partying with me when you were younger, guys. <laughs> All right, so let's go to day two. Day two, let's go. So day oh, two, hold on. go. You killed yours. I killed mine. I you, killed mine. You guys finished yours fine. Okay, we're well, good. he's good. Do a rinse. I'll kill mine real quick. Okay. Here's some water if day you don't two. want to go over there and get it. Um, so, you know, day two was actually when the trade show started. So, um, we walked in. First first thing we did was I wanted to go over to the Oliva bo- booth. We're going to get Oliva in here. Lisa's Ooh. favorite cigar is the Milanio V. Um, she's actually up in the air on if it's still her favorite. She I, I brought back some samples. They have some really really good looking figurado um, coming out that we're going to be able to get. I brought a couple of those back for her to smoke, but she's been smoking the Aladino Sumatra um, because it's so similar sure. to that. So I want her to smoke them back to back to see what she thinks, um, but we're going to be getting those in here soon. So we hung out with, um, with our boy Dwayne from uh, Oliva 
he took us on the tour. Um, and that was where, like, this this little bracelet, which you can't see it on the podcast, but you can see it on the video. Nice. This is actually a a punch or a, a punch cutter. So you take it off. It's got a punch in there. The thing they do differently on these punches are the bevels on the inside. So a lot of times the reason why I hate punches are because when you punch it, if you don't do it very smooth and clean and it's not a sharp blade, it will crack the cap going out yeah. and it ruins your cigar. With this bevel on the inside, the, the reason they do that is because if you if you crack it, it's going to crack in. That's the part you're pulling out anyway. Sure. So I haven't really tried it. I'm going to try it and see if it works. I still don't like I've to punch I've got an Alec Bradley lighter that has a punch on it like that. That's Okay. Like that. Okay. So yeah. it, it's kind of cool. We, they gave us this um, at the at the award ceremony. but um, So I, I got one of those. But he, that, that guy, anymore. it's less, less, and I'm, sh- I, I'm sure it's probably European, but it's less fines, lames. So I'm sure it's like less finesse lamas or whatever, yeah. but le, la face le, le fine. yeah, something like that. But it, but he actually is is a, I mean, does jewelry and all kinds of stuff, and he made some really cool stuff, including cutters and less lighters. Fine manas, exactly. <laughs> think, it's I a southern way. No, that's, exactly. that sounds pretty Hoosier, actually. That did sound Hoosier. You know, when we've got Versailles in hey, Indiana, hey, Versailles. It's, it's good to see the Kentucky boys turning into Hoosier. Right, right. love it, love it. <laughs> <laughs> But Everyone we, used to say I had a northern accent. I'm like, what the fuck is a northern accent? We're like, say milk. Like, milk. Milk. Like, milk has an I, not an E, dipshit. Milk. <laughs> milk. Milk. Say TV. 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 It's TV. <laughs> TV. V? V? TV. 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 I watched the tube, damn it. <laughs> tube. So we started there. Do you and call then... it a clicker? Give me the clicker. No. It's... No, usually it's just damn it, further. Gus, give it back. <laughs> <laughs> give it back. I, I was thought the clicker was a southern thing. Give me the clickers. You got yeah, the clickers? we just said like it is. Yeah. Like it is. Yeah. yeah, remote. But we all right. So you we actually there? just ended up walking around and seeing who was there that first day, and we had a few meetings. Um, you know, we did get to meet with um, Sin Coburn from um, Dissident Cigars and talk to the Black Label guys there and Black oh, nice. Works. Um, she, if you if you ever follow her on Instagram or anything else, um, Sin Coburn, Dissident Cigars, she's she's the one that is fully tatted head to foot. Hell yeah! I mean, the only thing that's not is like right here in her in her face. She's got the neck, everything. She's absolutely beautiful, but she's also going through a lot of crazy health shit right now, to the point where she's going to Colombia and places to try to get treatment because she doesn't have much longer to live. Yeah. She's got, but she got some good news before the show. So good for her. I'm, I'm hoping she gets the treatment she needs. To, it's an autoimmune disease. Honestly, I couldn't pronounce it if I could read it. There's right a now lot of she them. said it. Yeah, that's, um, a, that's not. So fun. she's dealing with that. Um, but we had probably about a half hour conversation with her. Nicest person in the world. We really enjoyed meeting her, that's talking great, to yeah. her. And she's got a couple of new cigars that I think I brought them back. I, and I, that's the one thing I did. I I didn't smoke a lot of the new stuff at the show. I purposely brought them back so I can actually have them on a fresh palate. Because fifteen twenty cigars in a day is so. I'm glad never you brought that up because I was gonna I was gonna say the same thing. So like I know uh, Jack when he does his like tasting and like pairings, um, he says a cigar will ruin his palate for a yeah. week. Yeah. So like I, I was super curious, you know, when you texted the group and you're like, yeah, I'm ten cigars in today, and I'm like, how the fuck are you tasting anything? No, it was honestly the ones I would smoke or ones I've had that you know. Um, yeah. The only one I smoked was, was was the first cigar I smoked at the show because we went right over to McAuliffe right before right after we went from Oliva, and I got the blue to smoke, and that was my first cigar of the day. Fantastic. We'll be getting them in here, um, but then um, I was started walking around. So I the re- rest of the time I was smoking pretty much something I I either knew or that was all they were giving out of samples at that booth. Um, but I did bring back a lot, and I have to. That's my job today is to sort through all the hundred of cigars. Did I got. you try? I know you did. What the two Aladinos? Oh yeah, oh yeah. No, you did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 the Fumanoche yeah. is the one that was released at PCA. Um, that one is coming is out. It's it's very off profile for Aladino. That's it's what they said. Earthier. Um, it's definitely darker and richer. I don't think it's, it's more of a full body one. Wasn't it, it is, but it's not well, like pound you in the face. It's good. it's honestly more. 
It's, heavy for Aladino. It's heavy nicotine, not heavy spice. Okay. So it's going to be like a medium to medium full on the body, probably a little bit more full on the strength. Did they tell you what the makeup was? What's the um, construction? I don't remember off the top of my head. I'll, I'll, I'll have better details yeah, on that like soon. because like Cameroon Reserva is <laughs> G. I mean. It's what? What? Like the other one, the Cameroon the Reserva. Reserva. Is, well, I'll talk about that too. So, um. So I, I took, so we got, I got a couple samples here cause we're in Aladino lounge. I got a couple samples here and, um, smoked them and posted them on social media and kind of caused a little bit of an uproar in Uh-oh. the industry. Cause a lot of the, uh, the big, the big wigs out there were kind of pissed. They didn't get in on that. And that was exactly what Aladino was happy about. It's like, Hey, let's create some buzz on this new cigar. Yeah, hell yeah. It's freaking delicious. So I had one, I took one out with me and smoked it the first day of the show. Yeah, it's not like they handed you a tag that said, hey, don't post pictures of this. Everybody was walking up to the Aladino booth asking Husto if he can get a sample. And he's like, no, those don't exist. He's like, well, motherfucker, you're lying. That guy's got it. <laughs> that guy, <laughs> that guy's got that it. guy over there has one. I see so, him right now. People so are it was watching. Kinda, it was, it was kind of funny because um, Husto's wife, Vivian, she come up and she says, you were supposed to bring your ass to the show. And I don't know if she was just joking or what. Husto was like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Look what's happening. This is great. So it was actually kind of funny because a lot of people saw it and they were wondering why the heck they couldn't get one. That's awesome. So yeah. that'll be good. We'll be getting those. It's good probably buzz. looking closer to the 1st of June before we get those. Um, but those will be out. We might have them by the race day. We're hoping. Is but he going to bring any with him uh, No. April? No, they're not ready to ship so- yet. Real quick, April 6th? 6th. Uh, this next yeah. Saturday. Next Saturday. Final four, right? Yep. Will be uh, the Aladino and Barrel event. Uh, it yep. was previously from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. I know we talked about this last week. Yeah. Scott did. Uh, the time has changed uh, from 5 to 9 to 1 to 5. Yeah. Um, so and honestly, I'm sure Trey, if he's, av- if he's able to, will probably stay a little longer. We'll see what happens. Um, but, um, yeah, well, he'll be out here. Um, I think... I'm hoping we have the Fuminoches by then. I was curious um, if either of them would be around. He's he said he was going. Well, I mean that's I mean that's still. No, it's not this weekend. Wait, it's next weekend. I, after this, that's right. What that's is, right. Yeah. By the time My this releases, yeah. yeah this by the time weekend. this episode releases, it is this. They're going to try try to ship them out um, in time to, that I have them for the show. Be good. So we should have that, or for the event. So we'll have that. Well, I won't be here for the event. I have softball that day. I yeah. will be here that day, but later that night, I'm just going to come straight here from the not, not so. playing softball. Not playing softball. Right, right. TDing. Yeah. We have uh, right, right. ACC Tech Network for yep. for uh, University of Louisville softball. So. And I will say, yeah. if these cigars are available, then you can definitely visit Lot 6 at IMS, and yep. we'll have them there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah, we'll have them and I will tell site. you, that Cameroon Reserva is special. It's, yeah. it's, it's, that's all I can say. It, it is very special. So save me some. Well, we won't have those till June. So you'll be fine with those. The Fuma Noche is what we should have. Okay. Well, send me some of those. We will. We okay. Will. So we'll quick, uh, quick tasting. So we moved here. on to the regular, uh, BCBS stout 2019 still. Um, I got to say, should have tried this one first. I love it. It is good, but I'm a little underwhelmed after the other two. Really? Oh. I am. Really? I'm not saying this is bad. That's no, not I, what I'm saying. I kind of like the direction we went because these we are very fruity. Yeah. This one is leaning more into it's, that nutty. I got like coffee. Dark notes. Yeah, coffee the coffee's notes. in there. Yes. Look, this is, just, this is classic. Every year when it comes out, you know, it's going to be subtle differences from one year to the next. But but this is also the This is Bourbon one. County. Mm. This yeah. is, so this, this was 14.1%, like, then 14.2, then 15. It's just always yeah. good. It's a good... Good beer, you know. Yep. And the price, yep. so I think the other, uh, the only one that is different, I think they're $25 for the regular. Uh, I think the Weller one was like 65 Damn. Because of what it was. Right. It was the name. Aged in Weller for two years. Um, so I think that one was like 59 or 65 or something like that. But I think the re- the rest of them are like 25 bucks. And I'm okay. smoking a little faster than you guys, so I'm definitely, you know. Well, I'm a Robusto, the, so. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. So I'm, I'm in the, the final third here. The Toros. And, um, I mean, this, this works, this works here, right? I mean, typically you'd expect when you get to the, the last third, those high notes, the, the light fruit notes, those start to drop away. Yeah. You end up with the nice bready notes or, or some of those, you know, more earthy elements. Yeah. And the, the final third here is absolutely matching up well with this for me. Good. Good. Yeah. I'm, I think, I think so too. I love it. I think they're all great. We still got a CBS to get through. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I didn't realize. Jump back some so what else was on day two then? So because I know you did. It a was bunch literally of shit just all. Two. I mean, we were, we walked through the entire show, talked to different you know different booths. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of some of the other the other booths we stopped at that day. Um, we we definitely stopped and talked to the boys at Aladino. Um, Espinoza. We stopped by and talked to them a little bit, but then the next day, which I'm on, I'm going to go ahead and blend them together. We went to the Espinoza booth, got to hang out and talk with um, with Guy Fietti and Eric Espinoza. Yeah. Super nice. I mean, can't say enough about him. He was just we, they had a, you know roped off section for it's one a reason. Person. Well, it was one reason they had it roped off, and we sat down on a couch and a chair with him. Sit down, talked. He was interest, interested in us. He told us some stories about them, and um, the the cool thing was. The, those ropes were there because people were coming in just trying to weasel their way in to have a conversation with Guy. Yeah. And um, we were just happy Take to Take me to Flavortown. Exactly. But um, so we got to hang out with them. I've got a sign coming, which I'll. I'll I saw that. That's at. awesome. Um, they, they signed it for yeah. the retailers. The I'm looking brands. forward to having that, that big uh, ashtray right here. Yeah. And big ashtrays coming. Yeah, this is the order the, I placed. For the next uh, podcast. We'll so that, right? I, I don't know when we're getting, I don't know okay. when it's going to ship. So have no clue on that. But it's it's going to be one ashtray for this big table because it's, it's that big. big. It's, it's big. big. It's nice. It's and, nice though. But there, I mean, it was really that was a good time hanging out with them for a little while. Uh, went to the we talked to the guys at Padrone. Got to got to see George and um, Orlando and some of the other guys there. Um, Did you meet new people? New, new brands. Uh, honestly, I kind of stayed away from a lot of that. Yeah. Only because I, I'm. Didn't want to bring in some new brands right away. I did talk to one, and I, after smoking it last night, I'm probably going to bring it in. Um, it's and it's a kind of a funny name. It's Lovely is the name of the brand. Okay, they have a story behind it. It's a was I think Wisconsin brand. Um, it's bringing back an old brand is what they've done, and I I was wasn't expecting much, and I um but I got the cigar. I smoked it yesterday. And it was delicious. It was great. So it was a it was a dark Maduro, full body, great great flavor, and um, so we'll probably be bringing that one in. There's they only have a couple, so it won't take up a lot of space. What's their? So we'll probably get it in here. Where are soon. they getting their tobacco from? Um, are they making? it I here? believe it's Nicaragua. Oh, okay, I it's Nicaragua. Yeah, hmm. uh, but it was very very good, and they were really nice people. Um, one of the one of the girls was there. Her name's R J. Shout out to R J. Shout, Shout out. out. Um, she. Um, she actually has been here quite a bit um, before she moved, and she's part of their group now in Wisconsin. Um, so, you know, it was nice to see that she was she was talking us up as a lounge to them, and we got a great conversation there. Um, and then we went to several other booths. Um, we went to um, La Galera's booth. We hung out with with um, Corey Frisbee there, got to meet Hoji nice. Blanco and his, his two sons. Um, he, his family, um, again, it's another family doing all the things and it, you know, when Hochi decides to retire, it's in good hands with the two boys and the daughter. So the boys are more involved. I think the daughter's a little bit behind the scenes right now, but, um, that's going to be a, that's going to continue to be a great brand for a very long time. I I think that's awesome that a lot of these brands are, are keeping this stuff family. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they they're they're doing generational. They are. Yeah. It's the same thing with moon drops. You know, we, Ask Mark like what his end goal is, and he's like, "I'm never going to see a dollar from this." Yeah, it's, and it's he wants for the to future. leave a legacy. He, he wants to leave a legacy. He does want to have wants... enough cash flow to be able to go down to Florida. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah other right. than that, it's but a, like, yeah, same yeah. thing. Pass Pass family family run this and <laughs> send me a check it. every month. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. He wants but, it to be an oil rig. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> same but yeah, thing I mean, we so so. There was one thing you mentioned last night that I thought was really interesting, and it wasn't about who you saw. Mm-hmm. It was about who you didn't see. Who yeah. wasn't at yeah. the show. Davidoff wasn't there. Davidoff was not at and the show. Oh, now shucks. I will say a couple years or a couple years ago, all the big ones left to PCA because they were irritated with what was going on the PCA. They wanted to make a statement, so the top four or five didn't show. Everybody came back this year except for Davidoff. Don't know why. Could be because my prediction's coming true. We'll see. So my prediction was that Davidoff's on the on the sale block and someone's going to buy him. We'll see. So I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Come you know December. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> and it honestly could have just been that Davidoff still wants to make the same statement. 
I don't know. I don't know. That's I guess fine, we'll, we'll probably hear more because you'll, you'll start seeing some news stories coming out after the show's, now that the show's over. I'm sure something will come out eventually, but I haven't seen anything come yeah, from Half Wheel yet. There's still new brands coming out. There's the the brands that everybody already knows. It's coming out with new blends and coming out with new staples. And yep. so, I mean, well, and speaking of that, I'm too, a fan. We, um, I, I stopped by and talked to Jonas from Blackbird. Um, he's Ooh. got a couple of new cigars, Superb and the Wren. I smoked the Wren last night. Um, he's sending me samples of the Superb right now. So I haven't smoked that yet. So we'll see about those, see if those are ones we want to bring in. Unkind's one of my favorites. Yeah. That is a great cigar. I love that cigar. Yeah. The uh, budget stick. The Ro- Rojas mm-hmm. has uh, their next street taco coming out called Cinco de Mayo. So that one's going to be coming out. I'm getting those Different on size, order. or is it the same? It's a, uh, uh, it, it's a Toro. Oh, it is a Toro. Okay. Uh, the one that I the one that I have is a Toro. I haven't smoked it yet, um, but it's it's a Toro. So I'll be getting I'll be definitely checking those out. So should we be doing a, a tequila show around Cinco de Mayo? Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Sounds like a plan to me. I like it. I like Tequilas it. and mezcal, maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Be nice. Yeah. Oh, hot and mezcals. My oh favorite. yeah. Oh yeah. There you go. Yeah. I have to look and see. I'm if just here to drink. I don't notes. know shit about tequila. Yeah, I no worries. I I'm not. A, I'm okay. not a huge fan of tequila. Take it from our resident I do Hispanic like here. good high end tequila. <laughs> this exactly. this week. This week. I'm this week. I'm the resident Hispanic. Resident yeah. Hispanic. Yeah. Guatemalan. Whatever. I don't know. The yeah. darker complected person. Yeah. So day three is the same thing. Just meeting. Yeah, with I mean, yeah, it was just all the different ones. I'm trying. I had another one I was going to talk about too, and I can't remember who it was. Oh, um, stop by and saw um. 1502 Enrique and Soul there that they're going to be or they're going to be here at least Enrique is going to be here for an event coming up here in the next month or two a couple maybe May 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 22nd I think it is um, so we'll have Enrique out here super nice people they didn't have anything specifically new cigar wise but they have some new packaging which could be nice thank you to sponsor Deadwood Live Derek with Deadwood Live is producing top quality live edge products as well as bourbon themed furniture. If you've been in the lounge, you've seen the custom live edge table and barrel stools produced by Derek. Be sure to give him a like and follow on Facebook at Deadwood Live. That's D-E-D Wood Live. I think next year, next year's in New Orleans, right? Yes, I'm excited about that. Do you have to buy media? Do you have to pay for the media passes? We should should go, but we we should just be the marketing team for Final Third. For Final Third. Yeah. Like, not get media passes. Let's just go as Final but, Third. I think we would need media the, passes still, the, though. The difference is, coming as Final Third, you got to pay for your tickets. Yeah, but they're... Going to the media, you go for free. Well, we can talk about that. <laughs> we can talk about that I'm and just see saying, what we we'll do. But we'll, well figure we, it out, because I'd like to have put, a couple... Yeah, of you we guys could go. always put F, the Final Third podcast as a separate entity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, that's the media work. part. Cause yep. like, well, and I'll talk to some of the media guys to find out what what they got out of it. So um, it may not be the same access as what you would as a retailer. So maybe it would be worth just doing the retail side of it. But, you know, it'd be cool to get some, like, you know, one of the things I kind of wish I would have asked, although I didn't want to be a fanboy and do it. I didn't, was going to ask Guy if he would do a little intro for us. But I didn't want to be we'll a fanboy. So we'll, we'll I get didn't it. get that. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we got got to see Greg Free. He's, um, he's the one that owns the... Used to be Fuerte y Libra. He got got sued by Fuente because it's too close to Fuente Fuerte. Come on, guys, this is getting stupid. But they had to change the name of their brand because of that. It's like Fuente, it to? Fuente's out there suing everybody. It's like Fuerza or something like that. I, I don't remember off the top of my head. Same branding, change of name. Ridiculous. But it's just like, come on, Fuente, quit quit this shit. Ridiculous. This little guy, this little guy that's got, you know, five cigars. Is not competing against Fuente. Why are you suing them for this shit? It's like, come on, guys. It's getting stupid. Yeah, he didn't get a small loan of twenty thousand cigars. No, no. <laughs> but um, we love you, Al McAuliffe. Yes, <laughs> we do love Al. McAuliffe. We do love Al. McAuliffe. And Al was there. We got to hang out and talk with him oh, a little cool. bit too. Yeah. He was there. Get to see Amy and got to Lauren see Amy and, and did you got... get to meet Lauren. Yeah, I well, she was there. I she was busy. She was there. I didn't get a chance to talk to her. Talk to Amanda, okay. um, Al's daughter. Cool. She's super nice. Heck yeah, all of them are great. They're really nice. Again, another family doing yeah, this stuff. Family. It's so cool. Yeah, it's great. But um, they uh, so um, talk to the guys at EP Carrillo. So I'm probably going to be getting some of the um, Ernesto stuff in here. Man, it's been um, a while since so I've had some of that stuff. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to figure out where I can fit maybe. this stuff before I start buying it because yeah. I don't have a lot of room. But definitely enjoy talking to, to those guys. Um, they got a couple of new ones I brought back to sample to see what those are all about. I'm excited to go through these samples with you, man. Yeah. Like, we it's got a lot. Stuff. We got a lot. I'm so the next episode is going to be our pairing. Um, yes. The pairing, pairing of the, the month. month, which I already have an idea of. Not going to tell you what it is now. You'll find out what it is. Dun, dun, dun. Um, that's quite a cliffhanger. You could pretty much guess what it is because of the event. So yeah, yeah. If you follow the email, you can kind of so, guess what the April pairing is going to be. Yep, yep. <laughs> but you know, uh, release notes real quick. Let's go, talk about that. Go. So Michter's uh, tease today. They are. I think it's uh, what is it? April. They're going to release the Michter's ten year. Um, tell you got the notes pulled up, Scott. So yes, you, I do. Who read that yep. one? Uh, it's, that's all these notes here, right? Yeah. So, yeah, just the bottom there. Uh, Kentucky straight bourbon, uh, single barrel. It will be limited quantities. So, you I can't know, remember what I paid for my tenure. Um, 150? It is a Kentucky distillate. So good. Yep. And, uh, I've got a fire I'll charred. bring a sample of that in. Fire charred. Not a, no, uh, that's the cooperage. Fire charred new American white oak barrels. It's like and they're saying bottling is going to be ninety four point four. That'll be yeah. interesting. Ninety four point four. Huh. I don't know what mine is. I'll have to look. I'll have to bring some samples in. I've had some ninety fours. Like you get just above that ninety, and and you feel like you're tasting a bottled and bond. Um, sometimes it works. Sometimes it it falls short. So yeah. so I was in Kentucky last week. I stayed with my brother because we had a softball series. Um, and he stopped at a liquor store and to get some beer, and I stopped with him. Uh, it's a place called Prospect Liquors. Um, shout out to them, I guess. You guys suck. Um, <laughs> no shout out. No shout out. No shout you. out to you guys. We retract this. It was out. a great, it used to be a great place where they would have nice allocated pours on like a tasting bar. And it was like five, ten bucks yeah. for like a half ounce or one ounce pour. Uh, a certain demographic purchased the location. You could probably guess who. Uh and that's no longer a thing. Mm. Uh, they have all the allocated. They have all the BTEC. They have all the, you know, they have everything. More like a 7-Eleven with high prices. Yeah, it's just a fucking museum at this point. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, so my brother got some beer, ended up some Rasputin, which is fucking great. It is right? good. You know, we I've had it on, on tap. I, was, yeah, I got it on tap yeah, at the house so right now. I told him about uh, that, so he oh, was itching yeah. for some. It's um, North Coast, man. I'll tell you, that is that to me is the, uh, like, so that's good. the stout. Yeah, that's like it. That. that is, it's it's a traditional stout. So it's it's just fantastic. Yeah, yeah. So I ended up with a bottle of uh, Michter Sour Mash because it was like forty three bucks, which is pretty much retail uh, for the Michter Sour Mash. It was just a regular small batch, um, but it's really good. I'll have to bring in some of that too because I know I think we talked about the Sour Mash before, and I don't think you've tried that one yet. So I don't think so. Uh, it's it's pretty good. That's a good one. Uh, the toasted Sour Mash is where it's at, but. Mm. That's another one of those special release ones. So. I would agree. The toasted is yeah. Is You've incredible. had that one, absolutely, oh, man. It's so good. I had it when I it was first it. released. I mean, it's been 10, 11 years since yeah. it was so yeah good. first brought out. <laughs> Fuck twenty fourteen. Yeah, that was yeah. Like, that was 10 I know, years ago, right? Holy shit! Yeah, but it I was say, that was one of the first. I think that was the first toasted I ever had. Oh really? Yeah, really. Yeah, it was, and it was just. See, I don't think I tried fantastic. that one until like. 2018 or 19 like I, I didn't try that one like when it first came out hey maybe it was more than 10 years ago then i don't know oh man it's crazy should have been drinking bourbon a long time <laughs> you know uh, we, we did establish last week that i like to drink yes so. I, I forgot the tagline of last week i should yeah. have put it in the comment section that's right it was, oh yeah it was i don't think you realize how much i actually drink yes that's, that was that great yeah. that was fantastic <laughs> i think our next beer episode we do we should just bring in the funkiest weird beer that any of us have pickle beer. Ooh, no. no, I mean, I mean, oh, that good, we have. They're good, good beers. Okay. good beers, but just different and weird. I've okay. got one I almost brought today. That's a stout from Zwanzig's down in Columbus. Oh, that ghost pepper infused. Oh, I bet that's good. Dude, I do love it. It's so good. I forget I what like the brewery is up, up north in uh, like South Bend or maybe over towards uh, Northwest Indiana up there near Chicagoland. 18th Street? Yeah, it might be Jen 18th know. Street yep. that, that has a chili stout. I, is, they do, I think. They and do. it is yep. really, really good. Like it's well balanced. It's not one of those 
We're trying to blow this, you out yeah. of the water. Right? This I don't one, remember you who. drink it, it's like, oh, this tastes really good. Oh, there's a spice. And then it hits you in the back. You're like, ooh, there's a spice. <laughs> yeah, there's a spice. Yeah. I had Dude, a. do that with like a 601 red. Especially the red. last, the last yeah. drink, it's all that sediment. And you're like, oh. I had a jalapeno colch from somewhere. I've had one of those too, and where, actually it was, it was good. Really good. Yeah, because the, the. I can see a kind of bitter green pepper. Yeah, note it works out in the cold. Oh, yeah. 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 That's kind of like else. the cucumber stuff with the colch can work really, really yeah. well. So that, yeah. would, that would make sense. I'd, so I would good. also point out um, if I can find it, um, Anchorage used to be everywhere, right? Anchorage yeah. Brewing Company. And you could find their bomber bottles. I mean, I'd walk into a liquor store and there'd be 25 different Anchorage bombers there. Um, Open in the CBS. They've got one that is a sour. And I mean, it is like two week old gym socks that you pull out from underneath your bed. Stinky, <laughs> but it's so good. You just, you can't stop. You just keep going after it. So, all right, yeah. let's get some rinse and going, Scott. Yep. Rinse us up. Happen. We're moving on to the founders. So, um, tell us about this. Oh, one, you Rob. were talking about sours. One of my favorite sours of all time still is still the, uh, the karmic wealth that Thanks, Cole, sir. um, Colt created over in Paxton one. and he only released it one time and it was, it was a, it was a job and uh, I still have a can, but honestly, I, I mean, it's a sour that's a year and a half old in a can. It might not be what it was once. So I, I, I hate to say it. I don't hate to say it cause I love it, but I think my favorite sour is probably dogfish head sequench. Mm, yeah, I like that. Good one. I did yeah. the salt. Yeah, sour. That was Absolutely. good. It's that oh was my good. God. Yeah. Jen's not a fan. She doesn't like. She's she's not a huge sour fan. Um. I do like the venomous though. Oh, the venomous is great. Venomous it's is more good. of a no, fruited no, no, sour. I've had that one. That's the one we got it's in the. We got in the yeah, it's cooler the one, right now. I, sometimes it doesn't sit well with me though. Yeah. Like, if it's, I don't treat the venomous as like my first drink of the day. Like that one's got to be after like a cocktail or after like an IPA to, to me. Okay. And that could be, I mean, it's subjective, but like to me, like with my flavor and like the way that it sits in my stomach, I feel like I got to have a base before I get to the venomous. Well, and the venomous for me is more of a, it's almost more like a fruited ale. It's not quite so, it doesn't have a lot of the sour notes that you might want in a sour, but I'm totally fine with that because I, I don't, I like the flavor of it. That's what I care about. So. When you're thinking about beer, you know, I kind of go back, I used to brew, um, got into beer real, real heavy, you know, when everybody was wanting to open up a microbrew in every town in America. Right. And there was kind of these big notoriety beers, the, the, these, dis, um, you know, these, uh, guys fermenting just some amazing stuff and it kind of makes me wonder they went like dark Lord day. You guys remember Dark Lord? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, that Good was a stuff. huge thing, and it was, you know, really difficult to get a bottle. Uh, you Pliny the had Elder. to go to the day. Right. You had to go to the day, and that was it. Yep. Pliny the Elder, right? Never, Good stuff. Yeah, Russian River um, Brewing, right? Shout out to Russian River. I Shout love out. Those Russian guys River. are amazing. Yeah. Um, Lagunitas, you know, and they still, Lagunitas love is Lagunitas. still making, and Stone. Stone. I mean, some of these classic... Right, the Firestone first Walker. one, Firestone Walker was love Firestone. Oh Walker. my goodness, that was yep some of the best beer, and it's kind of funny those you don't hear like the chase after that, right? Mm. It, it kind of like bourbon just overtook all of that, and I think it was kind of twofold. It takes longer for bourbon, so that's I think why we're we're still kind of in the middle of this big bourbon upswing, but you know beer was just available. You just had to go out to wherever they sold it and, right. and find it and get it each year when they when they made it and then you know there got to be microbrews everywhere yeah and once that happened and you had all these microbrews everywhere then it didn't really matter you don't have to go find dark lord because you could go to your local brewer and they're going to be making some incredible imperial stouts that are bourbon barrel aged that you know have these exactly. amazing flavors you can find these big you know double and triple ipas mm -hmm. and suddenly you're like yeah you know this this uh little you know, brewery out of Michigan is doing a great, you know, version of a West Coast IPA. Why am I out searching for the Firestone Walker or right. the Stone or the Pliny the Elder or whatever, right? Yeah. Yep. It, it kind of changed, and I think we're seeing that, right? We, we get a lot of these these small batch uh, bourbons in here, right? Wood hats yep. as yep. an example, and and it's, it's kind of up and coming now it's going to take another you know five to ten years possibly before we're as flooded as we are with beer right now 
Yeah. But I can easily see where that's that's going to start taking place, and you're going to go, well, why would I chase after Pappy or or yeah. after a B Tech? Right? Yeah. Okay. If Literally. one comes up, I'll, I'll I might get lucky and get one. Yeah. yeah. But the reality is, I can find good whiskey anywhere. Yep. And I think that's why we've seen kind of the drawback in the beer market. And I walk into a liquor store now and I'm like, man, the beer section used to be huge. Yeah. It's not anymore. But it's a you lot have to more go local. To like a total wine or like like down in down, even I, I mean it's I gotta say huge. even total wine, it's not I've been surprised. Used to be, they don't yeah. have like a beer guy that knows it. You're right. You're right. No, but they, they do have the thing I like about Total Wine and Kroger does it too. Uh well some Krogers do it. Some. Uh they, they do the individuals where you can like uh they either do like a build your own six pack or you can just buy an individual. Right. Me and Jen used to love doing that because we would go try these brands like Founders and some of these other places that like we hadn't previously heard of. Yeah. To where like, I mean, a six pack of Founders like seventeen dollars. Like the shit's expensive. Not CBS. Is. Yeah. CBS. Is- well, yeah. yeah other than that, <laughs> but like more than some that. of the other Founders. Yeah. Are, like, KBS 16, yeah. and some of those. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, KBS is everywhere now. It's all everywhere. the time. Which, which yep. they all base the this one off the the KBS, but this one similar. Has the, the this, maple the, barrel. Yeah, so this one takes a bourbon barrel, sends it off to the maple farm, then they age maple syrup in the bourbon yeah. barrel, then they bring it back and put their stout in it. Yeah. So you got the maple, Thrice. you got the bourbon, and then you have the stout, and it just pulls all those flavors. I've actually got some hot sauce that was used from X CBS barrels. So you got bourbon, maple. Beer and That's hot amazing. sauce. Mm. It's called Bliss, Ooh. and you can find it a Sounds lot of the like stores around here, and it's delicious. Oh. Um, but yeah, that's, that's probably my favorite hot sauce. That's that's the thing that we like about Total Wine and some of the Krogers is that they will they'll sell you those individuals so you can try these things instead yep. of buying like a full six pack or you know twelve pack or whatever. But it is go go walk through some of these beer sections now, and I mean I just went to buy a bunch of beer at, at Total Wine. I was looking for some European brands that used to be around all the time. I was looking for a Flemish sour. And I'm at Total Wine. I'm thinking they're gonna have it. Nope. Yeah. Didn't have it. Even in they the single bottle. Shit. They didn't have it. Right. Yeah. They do have a lot, but it's amazing how local it's become. Yeah. It, it's they're not shipping stuff in from all yeah, over the world. Yeah, because they used to have it separated out to like you know uh, limited release, uh, local craft, and then imported. Imported. Yeah. 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 So yeah. they had like a couple different sections, but I'll yeah. tell you what. One of my favorite places to go you know d- discover beers is jungle gyms down mm. in cincinnati their beer section is I massive Jen took me there one time yeah i've not been there and everybody talks about how big and the cool thing about is. it is is you can get one of those little six pack you know carriers and you can build your own six packs with all love these it. different beers yeah, love it. you can try beers from all yeah. over the world i think party so source good. does that too they probably do. Yeah. I've not been to Party yeah. Source, but I'm, yeah. I'm assuming it's very similar. Yeah. I guess a lot of places do that now. Like, uh, yep. I, I think a lot of the larger retailers kind of moved into the whole, like, build your own six-pack thing, which is... It's pretty common. Great, great way to yeah. do it. Find it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, actually, Meyer does that in Anderson. Oh, really? Yeah. At least yep. they used to. Yeah, Meyer and Kroger both do. Do they? Okay. Yeah. Yep. So that, that's a nice way to do it. They'll sell individual bottles, and you can Honestly, do it that I way. never paid attention at the Meyer that but I go to. you're yeah. still not finding... No. Anything. I mean, you'll, you'll find all kinds of styles. Well, it's like, you know, when we oh, first, tools. when, uh, <laughs> when Elysian space dust came out, that, you was know, a good one. that was one that you could, you was hard to find. Now it's everyone. I mean, they got them in cans and freaking grocery stores. Now yeah. it's become, it's almost become the Lagunitas IPA now, you know, it's like, that is a fantastic IPA. See, that's, that's what I find drink everywhere. Now, when I go watch a movie over at, oh. uh, imagine, yeah, there yeah. Hamilton Town Center. Get, get one right there. Yeah, you can get it, and they'll yeah. They'll we go totally to, buy liquor there, dude. It's it's twenty four ounce for like seven bucks. Oh, yeah, we just bring. A that's flask. what I love that's about cheap Top for, Golf for space dust. I go to Top Golf whenever yeah. I go there. You get the thirty two ounce mug, and I think it's like five bucks of Lagunita. Oh shit! Go out yep. there and have two yep. of those, and you're having a great time hitting balls yeah. out there. Yeah, <laughs> it's beer's got to be cheap totally. for what they charge it. Oh god, be yeah, there. they're not making yeah. money on their beer; oh, they're making money everywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> What's the, this doing for you, Rob? What's um, the CBS I, doing for this, you? This this is all. This is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, stout of all time. Um, this is the 2019 release. This was Much the last lighter. last release that they they did before when they got bought out. Mm-hmm. So they got bought out by a larger conglomerate. They just bought it, yeah, brought it back out this in year, Bev, right? Uh, it might be. I don't remember yeah. for sure, but they just brought it back. This is one that they initially just nixed because there's so much work to do on it. Yeah, 
And um, they decided to nix it. And I think they had so much backlash that they finally said, all right, we'll make yeah, it again. You got to keep it. And honestly, it's an amazing seller for them. I mean, you're, you're going to spend, I mean, I don't know what it is now, but back then it was like 40 bucks for a four pack. Yeah, I think they went to bombers on it. They're high. Well, they used to have bombers. Then yeah. they went to the small bottles and bombers. And then okay. they went to just, to just the small bottles in 2019. Yeah, I think but I think the a, new ones, I think they did go back to the bombers. Back to the bombers. Yeah, I think yeah. this is the one that's like $15 for like one of them at Total Wine. I yep. think the oh, yeah. uh, the bomber, the bombers used to be around 24 25 bucks for one bomber. Yeah. Um, I don't know what they are now. I have not bought a I'll new one yet. I'll say they're 17 18 though. That's a pretty good deal. That's not a bad deal. For something yeah. like this, you can only get it once a year. And honestly, a bomber. You can have four guys. Oh and yeah, that's that's enough. I mean, hell, we we both had a decent pour out of that little bottle there. Yep. yep. For us, I mean, we had enough beer here. We didn't need to have a full pour of any of them. But yeah. <laughs> and there's uh, there is beer here, guys. So you can drink more. Oh, we'll we'll make our way back through it. I, so I like that one. That one's really good. So Even yeah, maple so, definitely comes through. So the last yeah. the last day of the show, again, we went through the we went through the floor and we actually talked to a lot of people we hadn't talked to. Talked to the boys from Dapper a little bit. Um, didn't really get a chance to sample anything of theirs because they were they had other meetings and I was totally fine with that. I I can talk to them anytime. Yeah. Um, but then um, that was the day that we had the award ceremony. So that was a really cool, very very cool thing. They it was buy in by only, so it was all the lounges that were nominated, and then um, all the brand owners were were invited to it as well. That's awesome. And uh, so it was a pretty full house um, of people probably. I don't know, at least a couple, two or three hundred, whatever people that were in there, and um, you know, they came in, they gave us these little bracelets, which was kind of a cool little gift. Yeah. And then, um, we you know sat down, smoking cigars, having some drinks. Drinks were on them too, so we got to have some some cocktails and pours wherever we wanted, beers and all that. And then um, they started going through the the process and ours, the so they started with. Cigar shops only. They only sell tobacco, no smoking inside, anything like that. Um, so they went through that first first winter, and then they went back to um, the cigar. They the cigar lounge. They call the cigar lounge one that does not serve liquor, but has a place to smoke inside. So that was okay. another category, and that one. Um, and again, I don't remember who won that one either, but. Then they moved from that one into the cigar bar, which is us. And, yeah. um, you know, again, like I said, we were completely shocked when they're showing all the videos of all the all the places that were nominated and we got picked. And, um, yeah, Lisa was speechless. We're all in tears. And, you know, Husto and everyone back here is in tears. And the whole table, you know, we're all excited. It took us a while to get up there, but then, you know, our walkout song was Love Shack. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So yeah. everyone's Love into it, it dancing yeah. and singing and stuff. So it was a really good time. And, you know, it was, it was kind of funny because, you know, Lisa's not typically the, I want to go out and drink and do party and all that stuff. Oh, yeah, she's ready to go drinking after that. <laughs> we, we were going celebrating. She's feeling it. And yeah. I was like, yeah, we can go back to the room anytime. She's like, no, no, I'm not ready yet. All right, let's go. So we ended up going out to um, to the Smoke Cigar Lounge and um, partying a little bit with La Galera, smoking and drinking. They had amazing yeah. – I'm telling you what, if you're in Vegas, it's a little bit off the beaten path. It's in a, one of the suburbs of Vegas. Um, but just to it, it's S-M-O-K – Cigar Lounge, and um, look it out. up. Go out there. They have uh, they do um, small plate um, appetizers. Oh, cool. Um, so they do have some food there too. Every appetizer we had was insanely good. They had burnt ends. They had meatballs. They had churros. These little churros were freaking amazing, and they had those out there for us. Um, burnt ends. Their drinks. Their their cocktails were great. Oh, they were the burnt ends were insane. Yeah, they were so good. I wanted like four plates of them. I couldn't get all so of them. We call them meat candy. Yes, meat candy. The, the the meatball was was the winner for me though. Oh. That meatball was insane. That sounds it was awesome, so man. good. Um, but so we hung out there. Their cocktails. She's she's like I say again, Chelsea. She's killing it out there. Their cocktail. Um, I, I actually had their version of it, their Sazerac. Pretty damn good. Second best Sazerac I've ever had. <laughs> What's the best? <clears throat> Ours. Right here, but, baby. Yeah, yeah. But um, Come find out why this is the best of the leaf. Yeah. 
for the Midwest. Yes, please the do, Midwest. please do, because yes. yeah, it's cocktails, it's cigars, it's community, it's and everything. It was really funny because as we were, you know, we, we sat down at the table after the award was given to us, and we sat down, you know, a lot of people coming up congratulating us and all that stuff, and then. Rohan, shout out to Rohan. Out He's Rohan. the one that um, started Circle City Cigars in Indianapolis. He bought the old Cosmo Knights, and it's yeah. now Circle City Cigars. Um, he came up and congratulated us and um, got to talk to him for a little while. I meant to ask you about that because I've also been getting targeted ads for Circle City Cigars. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, he's he's that. definitely doing that. Um, it's, They've only it's, been open for like a year I mean, they've been open for a very long time, but they just changed ownership. Oh, okay, okay. Um, it's maybe that's it's why. It's like it's just north of the um, the Children's Museum. I think it's Illinois. Illinois, yeah, yeah. Illinois just North right of right. there. Um, really cool place. Um, they they have um, it's a it's in a it used to be a predominantly just a, a like black business owners um, club, and it was a private club. Then they opened it up to the public. And um, and Lisa and I have been over there several times. Super nice people. They're great people. Decent selection on the bar. Really nice selection on the bar. I don't know what Rohan's done with the bar. I mean, he could have changed things up and made it even better. But um, really good prices on all their pours. Um, and, but, again, I haven't been over there to see what he's done with the humidor either. So he's he's taking that on. Rohan used to be one of our customers here, and now he's doing his own thing. So it was really cool to see him. Um, maybe we go out there one day. We should. We definitely yeah, maybe, should. Maybe I would, we go do – I'll, I'll, up. I'll reach yeah. out to him and we'll do an, we'll maybe interview we'll, him over we'll, there. Yeah. We'll, we'll do an episode over there with Rohan. Rohan if you're listening to this, make sure we get yeah. connected. Cause I want to make sure we, we get great. that done. I'd yeah. love to spotlight your place. We'll take the McAuliffe approach, like with their podcast going live on Friday. Going live on Friday. <laughs> so we will, we'll, we'll take that approach. We'll talk like, to you yeah, soon. Maybe we can do a Monday or a Tuesday or something like that yeah. when I'm off or whatever. I can just, leave. we've already kind of started that with like the distilleries, like yep. trying to help these local brands like moon drops and, you know, Eventually, we'll make it up to West Fork and talk to them. Yeah, uh, yep. I'd like we'll go that. down to Starlight, and you know, we'll go back to Fifty Five, and we'll. Weather's getting know. warmer, so we'll be able to be outside. Yeah, weather's getting warmer, yeah. so smoke it's while we're drinking. Be great. So, yeah, yeah, I think let's let's start going places. And then after Summer. after we left there, we um, we hooked up with again with Ro, or with um, Hochi and and the crew over at Smoke, and then went back to the casino for a while after that because Lisa was not done drinking yet. So of course. we had to go back to the casino and we'd drink and hang out there for the evening. So plus or minus plus or minus what? That's... Did you end up or down? Yeah. Oh, I lost all mine. I mean, <laughs> Lisa. <where laughs> yeah. She at? Yeah, we both question. lost. We both oh, lost. Man, bummer. Yeah. Well, the problem was, and I'm going to throw Jake's Jake under the bus here. Crown heads, Jake. Where'd he go, Jake? Um, we went to the casino at, at uh, resorts and um, we were walking, trying to find a, you know, um, a blackjack table and we sat down thinking it was a lower it was a $25 table and I think we all put our $100 standard. out there yeah. and we all walked away about five minutes later <laughs> I did I did win I did win a couple and I was up 100 bucks and decided to be stupid as hell and put $100 out and lost it all look at a $25 <laughs> table if you win one hand you gotta leave I did talk I Rob I, I did talk Rob out of a $50 bet on the Avs last night to win by two Good for you. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Dude, when they were down okay. by one. I will was... tell you, that's the one thing I was so pissed about. Let's throw, let's throw Dr. J under the bus a little further here. Damn um, it. <laughs> so we were out in Vegas, and I was watching the game, and it was the Pens and the Avalanche. Pens were up oh, I was middle, nervous. middle of the way through the second period, almost towards the end of the second period. They're up 4 nothing. Yeah. And I was, like I was telling two. Lisa, I'm like, I want to go back to the sports bet, and I want to put 50 bucks on the Avs to come back. She's like, She's like, oh, I think they'll come back. But we were at the trade show. We couldn't get away. Oh, man. And I was so pissed because 50 bucks would have probably paid out 1500 bucks. Yeah. yeah. Easily. Yeah. And Maybe more. I was say Maybe more. more. Like 2, yeah, probably. Yeah. And I was so pissed because that's that's the one way I bet on the, on the ass. When they're down big, I always bet on them to win because they have to. They, they come back do. at least yeah. one out of every two or three you times. You never bet on so. the pins. Actually, quite a bit more. They're 26 games. This year, I that think they've come, come, so, yeah. come back wins. Uh, of course, they did yeah. get beat by the Habs last yeah. night. Ugh. But they, you know what? Was, yeah. They were on Fuck a nine the game. Pens. They were on a nine game winning streak, and they're going to lose some. So, hey, but McKinnon did get his point. He did get his point. So he, games. he tied with Tam's, you know, Kucherov. Yep. Um, but Kuch plays tonight, so he'll probably Boo. pass. It again so calling all dog lovers say hello to spencer lee's offering freeze-dried pet treats crafted with care and bursting with flavor spencer lee's treats are the ultimate reward for your four-legged friend made from single ingredients and freeze-dried to perfection 
These treats are packed with all the goodness your pup craves. Be sure to visit Spencer Lee's on Facebook or Instagram for updates and website information. Yeah, we were, we we looked it up and it was like, wow, 20, that seems like a lot. Oh, yeah, that record, that's 51 consecutive games. Yeah. It's ridiculous. By yeah, the great Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. 51. Yeah, that's two-thirds of a freaking season. Yeah. Like, yeah. what the? Yeah. So, Gretzky, you're still the man, but yeah. Max on his way, baby. Let's go. Well, I know Scott <laughs> moved on to a unkind here, but. Which I will say, you know, a little bit heavier cigar than what we were yeah. smoking in the blue. And it yeah. absolutely stands up. So to to the stout here, yeah, the CBS so. hits different because it's eleven percent. Yeah, yeah we started low. with fifteen, went fourteen to fourteen one, then eleven. But I will say so none of went, them tasted proofy at all. I mean, they did. They not, all were no. very sweet. Yeah, they were. They were all. This yeah, feels no, no. the proof. My physical being feels the proof come of on, the beer. The come beer. on, come on, Jen. Use your words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drunk. <laughs> I, I feel the beer I feel the pulsing beer. through me. Oh. No, it, so it's st- starting out at 15%, going to the 11, this one definitely seems lighter. It's not mm-hmm. as viscous as the 15. Uh, but I think that has a lot to do with the finish on those first two that we had mm-hmm. with the Monchery and, and the Weller 12 barrel. Yeah. Uh, and then going into the... Uh, this one the, hangs the on the one. glass more. This one does, but, but it's not. You're as right. Thick. It doesn't do it in the palate. I, no, I think it this one. This one's way. It's more drinkable. You and said the Weller of, did, was not as thick as some of the others. The Weller was the thickest one we had today. Did you think so? Really? Uh, I do. Okay, I do. I think. And, I agree. Yeah, I mean, you I can go back and taste a little bit more, yeah. but I yeah. will say I've had CBS releases that were thicker than a heavy Guinness Drought. Yeah, but I I get way more like maple and coffee off of this one. Oh yeah. Uh then like there's the the first two you get a, like a little bit of fruit. The second one definitely the monstery you get that cherry. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then this one is just all maple. Definitely a stout. You yeah. Know, it, it's it's definitely prevalent. It's there. definitely got that maple sugary. Yeah. Note, right? Yeah, yeah. Kind of sticks yeah. to dark, your lips dark, a little sweet. bit. And, yeah. Yep. What's it doing with the cigar with you, Rob? Cuz I know you still got a little bit left. On um this. I I just let it out. So I'm almost done here. It, so. I mean, honestly, it was doing the bready thing that he was talking about still. I mean, the bre- the breakfast or the um baking spices kind of popping through, but it was almost that that bready. Not not as much into the um um sourdough kind of toast we were talking about earlier it's definitely more of just well, this, like the this, graininess this sweet and of sour, bread. all this the extra high notes there they just yeah. keep falling off they do but, i think these two with the cbs and the McAuliffe blue is giving me kind of like a cinnamon nut bread okay like the yeah uh almost like a coffee crumble see and i'm i'm one of those guys where i'm not i'm not big pairing with beer i, mean, I don't pair cigars with beer very often i don't know i don't either. mind it with coffee which is odd because they're very kind of similar in sure. the way they feel but um, with with beer, I feel like beer always overpowers the cigar for me. I kind of feel like that's the case too. Yeah, yeah. And it doesn't I, matter what beer. I mean, that's like like we talked about with the the Espinosa uh, La Ranja Reserva. Mm-hmm. Uh, that little bit of orange zest out of that Brazilian tobacco is the only cigar I've ever smoked with a uh, an IPA or a sour that worked. It still wasn't my favorite pairing, but it actually did work with it. But I could see that one with the one that I mentioned earlier. Uh, with the dogfish head, the sea quench. Yeah. With that, like, orange zest and, like, the sea mm-hmm. salt lime. Mm-hmm. I think that would be good. It, it, that, and it does work with that. If you're a beer guy, it's definitely one. I mean, I, I, a lot of times I'll go in there and I'll say, they'll say, what should I just smoke? And I'm like, well, what are you going to drink? And when they say they're going to drink an IPA or any kind of beer, I'll yeah. say, this is actually the best pairing for a beer yeah. right here. Because the what's the venomous? That's like a raspberry sour, isn't it's it? It's a raspberry, blackberry, and... Something else, maybe? Which is weird, because I like that, but I don't like that Coke. <laughs> which is a spiced yeah. raspberry Coke. Right. Yeah, and, and, Coke. and I know, it's and, weird. and Dr. J said he hated it, too. I, I no, like... Dr. J liked it. Grant said he hated yeah, it. Yeah, it was Grant that... Oh, yeah. Grant. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dr. J said I was wrong. I liked it. I know, so you and... I, it's two honestly, against two here. Well, I think the problem with it, it was called spiced Coke. Yeah, it should have just been raspberry. It should have just been raspberry coke. Yeah, because I liked the flavor. It was raspberry. It was there was no. It wasn't like a Captain Morgan in or anything. It was no. just raspberry. Yeah, I thought it was pretty good, but I don't. I would rather just have a regular. Diet yeah, coke maybe that was coke my problem. I don't really I drink pop like ever. So yeah, yeah. I got. I, got I do occasionally. Sometimes I need caffeine that I don't want to eh. 
Make a pot of coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just take, some, take some meth or something that'll wake you up. Right, right. Hey, I'll Scott, just hit can my you pipe. hit me up? I'll hit my pipe. <laughs> can you hit me up? <laughs> Let me I, get got a bump. I got you. I got you. Yeah, you have a glass vape pen. <laughs> <laughs> well, final thoughts, Rob. Let's let's hear it. What what you got? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought the show was great. I thought it was um it was our first show to go to. I've been to a lot of trade shows with previous employers. This one, um, definitely more casual. Um, not as much of the people coming out into the aisles to try to drag you into their booth. Yeah. Just they were a little like bit a more respectful than out. some of the some of the trade shows I've been to. That's good. Um, there was a couple that did it. They were very annoying, and I walked yeah. off, but it was fine. But but that was usually the the small guy just trying to get someone to stop and see his stuff, and I don't blame him at all for that. Alec Bradley. You got, no, it wasn't Alec Bradley. <laughs> we didn't stop I'm there with them you. just because we don't have their brand. Yeah. Um, we really tried to focus this year on – going to see brands that we already support, see what's coming out new, and then talk to the ones that are coming on, like Padron, um, and then, like, that lovely. I love that, yeah. So, yeah. we're, we're, we're bringing some stuff Padron, in. I'm excited for Padron, man. I'm excited I am too. to get some um, stuff in here. I'm placing the order today, so we'll have them in here the next couple of weeks. You know, hopefully we'll have all of it come in, but if it comes in phases, it'll be sec. fine, too. So, not last show, but the show before, we – mentioned that you were talking about bringing a brand in and you wouldn't tell us yep it was padrone that was brand yep padrone. Just, just casually just let it yep. just let it yeah sorry there. i forgot we did i, th- yeah. I forgot we hadn't talked so about official yeah. announcement it's for official. all those yeah padrone, padrone is coming account. to the final third yeah so we're excited about that i mean we're gonna have everything from the thousand series up to the 26s that's my favorite cigar um it's gonna be a good ra- range it'll be a wide cigars. range because like you know the thousands a little it's a it's a lower price point. Lower price, and then yeah. you get up towards the the nineteen twenty six, which is towards the twenty five thirty dollar um, cigars. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I think it's it's going to be like everything else in the humidor, where you have a range of affordability for everyone. Yes. So yeah, well, and um, everybody's got to try the nineteen twenty six at some point. Oh, it's such it's a great cigar. cigar. It is. Yeah. It's such it a really is. and that's the things like someone that doesn't like a more full bodied. That's where the sixty four comes in. It's yep. more of a medium, chocolatier kind of cigar. That'll be great. Um, there, I mean, the one thing that Padron does on your first order is they have a set lineup that you have to bring in. Actually, I kind of liked what they did because it gives you a wide range of what they offer Yeah, and you can bring them in, see what works, what you want to add, what you want to take out. And then down the road, you'll weed it down to where you want it to be. Right. But you didn't so, have to have 25 faces like, eh, yeah, yeah, somebody else close, close to it. Yeah. It's okay. in that, it's in that world right there. Yes. Well, yes. <laughs> but they have enough that, are, that are palatable to very much so you know yeah. stand for themselves so. that's the reason why the uh, lower lower shelf in there is completely bare right now because i'm waiting for Heck that yeah. to re- yeah. rearrange the humidor yeah. so stop by the lounge yes expanding the humidor yes more it's, shelves it's coming so more products more so, things yeah. are coming again it everything was, is great everything yeah. is going yeah. great and make PCA sure uh, awesome. you know if you're if you're watching this on sunday released on sunday right yeah yeah that's no Nash- uh, monday monday okay monday Monday well, morning. then I guess I hope you enjoyed your National beer. beer Day. Yes. yes, National Beer Day. We yep. tried it here first. Go hit up your local brewery. There's a whole bunch here. Sun yeah. King. Yes, there is. And that's things like it's yep. yeah, National Beer Day's mo- Sunday. Don't worry about Saint the Joseph's. day. Go, go out yeah, go, go out somewhere. next Monday, you know, yeah. on Monday or whenever this comes out. Just go out to your local brewery and support them cuz that's yeah. they they need you there. It's and that's, great. you know, on that note, I also want to say thank you to all you that helped us win this award because um, we couldn't have, couldn't have done this thing without you. Um, it's because of you guys that we're here. So thank you guys so much. Come be a part of the family. Yeah, come check out the new hardware. It's great. Yeah. 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 Rob, where can they find you? Uh, Final Third Cigar on Instagram, Facebook. Um, yeah. That's for me, Scotty D. Smokes. There you go. On you everything. Can, on everything. You can find me at Spencer Lee's and both the visuals on Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Happy Beer Day. Happy Beer Day. Cheers, Cheers, everyone.